where that is, whether the money has since been made available uh, to then uh, deal with it. And But there was also a snag uh, that um, until the public works department released uh, some of the contractors, they could not uh, <clears throat> uh, go uh, take over fully. The department uh, works permission could not take over fully because um, they are contractors who still had um, um, a binding uh, contract with the Department of uh, Public Works. So we would also receive a briefing on that, where that is at. And um, thirdly, the Minister was of Public Works was here, and then she presented that she had received the report and that um, uh, they were acting uh, on it. Uh, so meaning that um, all the officials of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure who are implicated um, in the report will be uh, called will be called to to account um, by the uh, authorities uh, in the Department of Public Works and uh, Infrastructure. So <clears throat> we just need to get uh, an update uh, as to where this is because. We were told last time that um, as at the time of the uh, investigation, uh, the first floor uh, was still closed. I mean, the opening, and um, so uh, and then on the on the two and three um, uh, hospital hospitals. Um, uh, both hospitals were also uh, uh, had a, a ramp um, a project uh, undertaken uh, in them. Um, we'll get a report as to uh, where is that ramp uh, at in both uh, hospitals. Um, and uh, so those are the, the, the two things. But, but I want to make this specific point in relation to a uh, to military hospital, that there was an issue of an ICU that was not um, uh, operational. Uh, as a result of uh, that, the department was outsourcing services um, uh, to the private uh, uh, sector. Um, <clears throat> so we'll also get the report uh, on that. Um, uh, the ICU was closed and the patients uh, were being transferred to private hospitals for specialist care and, and, treat, and treatment. And that was coming at a high cost. Um, and that is, was flagged as a cause, as a, as a, as a concern by, by the team. And the, um, the information is that uh, the ICU itself, uh, the, the ICU uh, is fully equipped, uh, but is not operational because there are no medical uh, personnel, uh, such as doctors and registered nurses uh, to staff uh, the, the hospital. As you will recall that uh, the ICU um, uh, was meant or, or is, meant, is meant to treat SN, SNDF members, VVIPs and, uh, and VIPs, including uh, military pensioners pensioners and, uh, and, and veterans. That it is not operational is, and we are sending patients um, who are, who are out to specialists, uh, to private hospitals and, and other uh, specialist uh, uh, service providers at high cost remains a cause for concern. Um, there's little information 
uh, available yet in so far as the third uh, military, I mean three military hospitals. So we will look at that uh, when that inf when the information uh, becomes available. So we'll touch on all these three um, uh, institutions um, when we discuss the report. And then the next item after this is the draft midterm strategic review uh, of the SNDF um, of the six parliament by the JSCD. So that's an internal document. So it doesn't require the presence of the uh, department. And then uh, so as the third item, the consideration and adoption of, uh, of minutes. So let's start with the, the, the minutes. Uh, it's not the minutes, the, the apologies, if there are any. I've received uh, two apologies, uh, one from uh, Mr. Reda, um, who said um, he's uh, in another uh, meeting and he will join uh, the meeting late. Um, and the second apology is from Mr. Mufanya who also indicated that um, uh, he will join the meeting late uh, due to uh, uh, load shedding. And uh, so those are the two apologies uh, I've, I've received uh, so far. Uh, Peter Daniels, uh, do you have any other apology? Uh, ex uh, Chair, Mafanya here. Yes, Ms. Oh, Mr. Mafanya, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm, I'm available. Okay, no, thank you so much. Available now. Back, okay. thank you. Yes, and there's also an apology from the SECDEV. Uh, apparently, they said uh, it will be a bit late because she had load shedding from four to six. Uh, I am here, Chair. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you so much, uh, SECDEV. Thank you. Thank you. As though we have all the uh, if, uh, people. Um, that needed to be in the meeting. Uh, maybe let me check. Are there any further apologies, um, uh, Mr. Daniels? Good evening, Chair. Um, yes, oh. yes, oh. oh, good evening, Chair. I'm also back, Chair. Um, those were the only apologies that I also received, the one just um, stated, Chair. Thank, thank you. you so okay, that's fine. Okay. All right, colleagues, uh, thank you very much. Without much ado, let me welcome the, the minister. I'm told that the minister is in the meeting. Uh, welcome the the the, the, the SECDEF, uh, and the team uh, that is in the meeting accompanying the SECDEF. and I've also noticed that um, the chief of the South African Defence Force uh, is in the is in the meeting. Uh, he too is also um, warmly uh, welcomed. Um, uh, him together with. Uh, the, the 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 officers that are in the meeting uh, accompanying him. Uh, thank you very much. You are all welcome, uh, colleagues. Without much ado, uh, uh, let's just zoom into the issue, and I will invite uh, the minister to. Uh, um, did not check check if the deputy minister was uh, in the meeting. Um, uh, did not see him. Um, okay, if he is in the meeting, I welcome him as well. Uh, Honorable Minister, over to you. Uh, Sabana Chair. Um, Sabana. Chair, uh, without further ado, I think we should just fall right into the meeting. Uh, Usek Def uh, and uh, Chief Sandap are here. Um, I think we we should um, just get on. I may ask you to leave me early. I'm not feeling so, too great, so ukulumaga kulaksis abonga che. Yeah, goes the minister. Okay, I uh, will understand when you leave the meeting. All right, uh, Sekdev, um, over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, we have the team here. Uh, the team is uh, a constitutes of our colleagues from the LOC division, led by General Ndlovu. And then also we have General Idwaba, 
and we have a General Nyangasia um, who are here to present. We have also invited Chairperson uh, General Mnisi, who is our Adjutant General, uh, because as you had uh, properly mentioned that uh, there were recommendations that were made by the investigating team that we had to forward uh, uh, the, 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 the matter on, on one mil uh, to the Hawks, which is something that we have done. And uh, I um, so, and we also forwarded the company that was involved with the hold to the Hawks and uh, our colleagues from the PMG environment had com uh, uh, confirmed that uh, the matter has been uh, uh, sent to the Hawks and they've got the case numbers. To that effect, Chair, we will have, a, I spoke to PMG and asked that he sends us somebody from their structure, but uh, Adjutant General has been invited because then we wanted a legal opinion because then since we have submitted and also being alive to the fact that uh, uh, some of these uh, legal processes may be protracted, what do we do with the company concern? So I would like uh, uh, for him to express on that. I have read it, uh, we've got our own views on it. And um, I think that we would allow that uh, uh, over and above the team from the log environment that uh, uh, those two colleagues, uh, General Munisi and the person that will be sent by the uh, uh, military police to then come and talk to us about the case that had already been uh, forwarded. So those are the colleagues that are here, Chairperson. And without much ado, I would hand over to the log division, uh, uh, General uh, Ndlovu, who is leading the team. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Secretary. Just before uh, I invite General Ndrovu uh, to take the platform, um, I want to check if uh, the, the adjutant, uh, Missy, is ready just to brief us on the referral of the, the, the report uh, to the Hawks. I said to the ICU, I made the mistake, the Hawks, not yes, ICU. Are you. Correct, yes. No, uh, no, a uh, chairperson, adjutant general is in the meeting, but he comes from our legal division. The structure that normally links with the Hawks is our military police. And that is the one that I said, I've asked Admiral Mapoto to send us somebody because he says he's uh, driving on his way to Kimberley. He can't be here. So we will have the person uh, that is going to lock in and, and brief us on that. So if okay. uh, it, it won't inconvenience you, I would suggest that we take the presentation and then by the time they finish, I think the, the person who will be representing the military police would have also locked in. Thank you, Chair. Okay, that's fine. No, that's fine. Let's, let's follow that, um, your suggestion, um, uh, Sergeyev. Um, General Nkovu, uh, um, the platform is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, as, as, as you have already mentioned, I'm Major General Ndobu, representing the Chief of Logistics. With me, as the SECDEF has already alluded, I'm with Major General Ndobu, who will do the presentation on one military hospital ramp, as well as the status and challenges of uh, upgrade with regard to two mil, as well as three military hospital. Uh, without wasting any time, I'll hand over to Major General Ndobu while I'm building the presentation. May I load the presentation chart? From my side, or are you going to load it from Please, me? please, please just load it on your side. Um, General, it means that you must give uh, our team, I'm, I'm, I'm asking my team to give you the sharing rights so that you can also move the slides um, uh, uh, on your side. It's better if you do that. Thank you, Chair. I think it, it actually from the left. Is it visible, uh, Chair? No, not yet. Uh, uh, no. No. Ah, 
Can I? Yes, you can see it, General. Thank you, Chair. Major General Daba will, will, will now commence with the presentation. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Members, Secretary for Defense, and Senior Members in the Department, uh, can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. <clears throat> uh, let me just, uh, from the onset, uh, indicate that uh, I think it is very important for this meeting that we address some few things uh, before we jump into answering the questions which the uh, Honorable Chairperson has already alluded to about the three hospitals. I'm going to endeavor to do this within 25 minutes at the most or less. Uh, but I think uh, there is something, a narrative which has been continuing within EPW. Uh, in the last meeting of December, when uh, this committee was listening to DPW, the Minister of DPW asserted that uh, she is the custodian of facilities owned by the DOD. Uh, unfortunately, we, were not, uh, we didn't have enough time to be able to address that at that meeting. And following that meeting, the Secretary for Defense insisted that, and the, that the, the herself and the Deputy, sorry, the Acting Director General of Public Works, establish a task team which will be addressing these matters with the view that any other appearance to this committee or any other committee, the, these issues which are staff work related would have been sorted out between ourselves and DPW. Now, Honorable Chairperson, on the appearance of the department to the, to the Standing Committee on Appropriation on the 2nd of September, the Honorable Minister of Public Works continued to assert that these issues, which I think that it is important that they, they are ventilated quickly and then resolved. Uh, during that meeting of the Joint Standing Committee on Appropriation, the Honorable Minister indicated that uh, she would want the Defense Force to give her a list of projects. She would want the Defense Force to give her a list of projects, which uh, the, sorry, which list of projects, sorry, which list of projects will be um, then approved for the Defense Force. And I'll come back to this point. She also offered to give professional uh, pro professionals to the Defense Force to assist in the execution of the projects, and. Uh, invited our minister to join her to approach the president with regard to, to section 97 of the constitution, where both ministers then will impress upon the president to say, transfer the functions from DPW. Now, coming back to the list, honorable chairperson, what the honorable minister did not disclose is that there are projects which we indeed want to take away from DPW. But if we take them away without funding, it will defeat the purpose. Currently, we are giving DPW 1.2 billion, as you are aware, and we have been talking about this over time, which we say we're not getting any value for money for it. And that is the money we are saying that uh, we would want to take from DPW and execute some of the projects ourselves. The second thing is that uh, in relation to the professional services which they are going, they say they can offer us, we've included in the slides after the questions, just a simple comparison of what we can do as the DOD and what DPW had done and utilizing their professionals. So we really do not agree with this position. The last one, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister and Honorable Members, is the issue of Section 97. Uh, which says that uh, the, the president by proclamation can transfer a function belonging to one minister to the other uh, uh, so that that minister then is responsible for that function. We want to indicate that uh, 
uh, according to all the, the legal framework which is there, starting from the Constitution up to the Guillermo Act of Public Works, there's nowhere where the president has ever transferred the functions from Defense Force to um, Public Works. The details are captured in slide number four, Honorable Chairperson, and then I'll move I'll move from from that to say that uh, uh, I'll then be jumping into uh, indicating. Now, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, we can ask now, how did we find ourselves in this situation? This is the slide which is addressing the legal framework. <clears throat> you can ask, how did we find ourselves in this situation where the Minister of Public Works believe very strongly that she is the custodian? Uh, this is slide number five, goes into details on exactly how we found ourselves here. I've got no intention to uh, bore you with reading all this, Safe to say that uh, we outsourced the function of, of, of infrastructure to public works uh, out of the advice of Deloitte and Tushi in 1996, as we did when we outsourced the function of um, the, the fixing our own vehicles, which now we are insourcing back by utilizing the Cubans. And now with the facilities, we are insourcing back by utilizing DBSA. The Honorable Minister of Defense was very clear in her, in her direction to us to say, do not take over what you cannot be able to execute and embarrass the department. So when you have capacity, take over and proceed. And this is exactly what we are doing. I'll give feedback to say how far are we with uh, uh, fulfilling the minister's directive. With that Honorable Chairperson, uh, with that uh, background, and if you go at the last of the slides, I'll be sharing that one or showing it at the end of the presentation. It's just that comparison which I'm showing you. What have we done as opposed to what DPW has done? And therefore, we think that we are better placed to execute whatever needs to be executed. Honorable Chairperson, let me then go straight into answering the questions from slide number six, uh, where we are discussing the three military hospitals. To do this, let me explain the difference between the REM and the projects which are executed by the, by the DOD. The REM is a project which was initiated by DPW in 2006 and to address uh, the dilapidated condition of our facilities. Now, in terms of three military hospital, public works was supposed to fix the leaking roof uh, at the hospital, which they have completed now but it is after more than six years that they were able to complete that. Uh, they also had a duty to deal with the, uh, they had also the duty to deal, to deal with the connecting um, passage where that passage was supposed to be connecting the, the children's theater after operation and going to, um, going to, uh, uh, back to the ward. So the theater and the ward, unfortunately, for more than six years has been, has not been uh, connected. And we are sitting with a problem where uh, uh, even up to today, this problem, the children after operation, they have to pass through sick outpatients who are waiting to, to see doctors. And we do not know exactly what are the ailments of those people. So the children are exposed to that. Uh, during the refurbishment of the three military hospital, DPW installed X-ray doors. And this X-ray doors, like I said, is about six years ago. They have never been able to close, rendering that uh, portion of the hospital unserviceable. It still remains the same. Even after our meeting with SPOA in 2018, which we were given a very clear directive that fixed this thing. This has not yet been addressed. And then, of course, DPW completed the uh, replacement of hot water storage vessels, uh, which we are happy about that. Now, there is a project which, uh, if you look at our example there, where DPW wanted to uh, fix the roof at a cost of 2 million, we rejected that request and we did it ourselves utilizing one reserve force engineer and seven uh, artisans from our side 
at the cost of 70,000 for material. And we, we finished that in two weeks after DPW could not complete that uh, uh, in more than six, six years. Honorable Chairperson, if we go to two military hospital, <clears throat> I must say that this project with all its complexities, which was also started Maybe, maybe, before, maybe, maybe before you move uh, from this uh, hospital uh, general, just go back to the previous slide so that we uh, we don't leave any dark uh, areas. So what has this ramp project achieved uh, in the six years that uh, it was um, uh, in, in this uh, mili mili uh, three military hospital? <clears throat> because we are saying that um, the, the roof, you did it yourself. And um, just, just in short, this is what you are supposed to do. This is what uh, was done. Uh, and this is what was not done. Correct, Honorable Chairperson. Like I've indicated uh, in the slides, you have areas which were completed by DPW. Uh, of the three military hospital. Uh, those areas which were completed, uh, like I said, is fixing. You see, these roofs were two roofs, were two kind of roofs. There's another roof which was leaking, that is a, a storm dam damage, that is for the emergency ward. DPW completed that one, no problem. There is a construction of the passage of the connecting, uh, of connecting the children's ward and their theater. That one was not done over six years. And then they had to replace. So, so if, 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 if it was not done by them, it remains undone. That's 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 a point. Correct. And it remains their responsibility because they 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 they, they are the ones who were supposed to have finalized this under the REM project. Okay. Yeah. But uh, uh, we are ready, of course, to take it over and do it ourselves. Uh, so those are part of the things which are uh, part of the of, of the discussions. But then we must then be guaranteed that there will be no interference of saying that uh, we have already appointed contractors or we have already appointed professionals, and then you have to deal with that. That is part of migration which our minister gave direction to, and we will be investigating this. Are there any contracts on this or or professional services on this? Uh, we, do we want to take over those professional services or must we force DPW to finalize this project? So those will be the, the debate which you will have in terms of sorting out the problems. And then now, the X-ray, no? The, the X-ray, uh, it will also fall under the same category. They have not done it. And if need be, we will also look at it uh, with migration. If uh, Honorable Chairperson remember about our approach to migration, we said, on the projects like this one, we're going to do due diligence to make sure that we do not eat, we do not uh, uh, take over the things which uh, DPW should have sorted out, either whether it, there are com uh, a conflict between themselves and the contractors. And then, of course, the roof which we did, there were no contractors on, so they were still going to be appointing contractors. They had just scoped it to the extent that they wanted to do it at two million. And we said that, this one is a no, and we we were we, we had the power to refuse here because uh, the project had not yet started. So we did it ourselves. If that uh, provides clarity, honourable chairperson. No, no, it does, uh, General. Coming to two military hospital, we said that with its complexities, which uh, it was a backward forward, um, we were able to reach a state where, in two years ago. DPW wanted to hand over this project uh, to, the, to the DOD and sign it off. We insisted that with our limited capacity, we, want, we, we will not allow them to sign off. We want to investigate whether the project is complete. Uh, there is an error in paragraph one where we say that the project was registered in 2012. It was registered no, no. in 2006 together with one military hospital. When we evaluated uh, that, sorry, can I be heard? Yes, you, there was a break 
Um, okay. Can you just go back to number one? You were talking, uh, trying to clarify what is number one, I'm correct. Yes, I'm and correcting I'm correct. this. Where we have captured that, we registered it in 2012. In 2012, it is incorrect. It was in 2006, together with the one military hospital. So the, 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 the two military hospital project, the REMP project, was registered in 2006. Now, the project continued, and uh, two years ago, DPW wanted to hand it over to the DO um, to sign it off with the contractors. We took our limited capacity of uh, professionals and went and did inspection. We were not happy with certain things, and we compiled a comprehensive SNAC list. That SNAC list, public works addressed, and we signed off the project this year. The total cost of the whole project uh, from starting from 2006, it has uh, ended up as 923 uh, million. So we have signed off ourselves. We are happy with the two military hospital currently. Honorable Chairperson, uh, I need to then go back to the one, okay, one slide is that uh, we have engaged with TPW to say that uh, from our experience, once you, deliver, once you deliver a project like a hospital, you have to put what we call total facility management so that uh, the maintenance can be ongoing of the complex things like uh, your HVAC systems, your UPSs, and so on. And there's not be go going to be any interruption. DPW is still working on this one, and we think that they have already started with the process. We are happy with that. Honorable Chairperson, coming to one military hospital, I think you have already indicated that uh, we have discussed this at length. And I wouldn't like to then take you through a lot of discussion here, except that uh, uh, number three, point number three, uh, at one military hospital, DPW still remains under the REMP project with the following, the repair and maintenance of the mechanical and electrical infrastructure, the HVAC system, and also the waterproofing, which has been a thorn in the DOD uh, for the past uh, many years, and unfortunately, even up to today, uh, more, than, more than six years ago, DPW, we have approached them to say, please finish the roof. We, we gave them 13 million for this, that they must do the roof. And it is up and down and nothing is happening. Every season when there is rain, and even now we are afraid that the rains are coming, uh, certain sections of the hospital have to close because they are... Um, getting water ingress from the roof. Now, the painful thing, Honorable Chairperson, is that uh, we have lost a lot of uh, medicine from our pharmacies because of the leaking roof. We had to additionally outsource some of the functions because the wards, which are, or let's say not the wards, but the, the areas which are providing that professional services, like for example, the dental theater at one time, it had to be closed. So any operation for dental had to be outsourced. And we say that uh, this is not sustainable. There is a, uh, we've been asking DPW to replace the sluice system. Now, honorable chairperson, the, sl the sluice system is a big danger if it is not functioning. In that after the patients have relieved themselves, the nurses take the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the waste and they must go and throw it away. Because of the dysfunctional sluice system, they are supposed to be washing those pens by hand. Now, that is a, a recipe for creating uh, what we call a, a disease in the hospital, and it can lead to the hospital being closed. We are lucky that the nurses are very meticulous, and up to now, uh, for more than six years, we have not been able to get any disease which has forced the hospital to, to close. But this is one area which we say to DPW, they must sort it out urgently before we get into that disaster. And then of course, we're talking about the repair and fireplace of uh, a rehabilitation pool. This one, uh, I'm aware that uh, DPW has given it to the total facility management and the total fa facility management is now addressing this one. And I think we are happy with the progress there. There are things which I did not indicate there, 
at, at, at one military hospital, the uh, UPS system. The UPS system remains dysfunctional for more than seven years. And the UPS system, for now we are just assisted by the fact that uh, the total facility management uh, project, which is at one military hospital, is able to bridge the problem by making the generators functional. And when there is an electricity trip, then the generators kick in. So you don't have any delay. And of course, the seventh floor project, which we did, uh, we had some money, which we then uh, uh, fixed the theater. Uh, that is the UPS for the theater. So the theater is functional all the time, whether there is uh, electricity or not, because of the UPS system, which we have installed there. Honorable Chairperson, uh, let me then say that uh, this addresses the, 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 the issues with regard to the three hospitals, save for what uh, uh, Adjutant General, uh, General Munisi, who's going to be then talking about uh, where are we in terms of Chetura, Abakas report, and uh, how are we going to be going forward in terms of completing the hospital. I'm not going to be uh, uh, making this presentation with regard to this because we have done so already. But what I want to indicate is this Gantt chart to say, according to our readiness from the logistic division, uh, we need 29, 29 months, we will be able to complete the hospital, uh, including buying of the medical equipment and make the, 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 the first floor, the pharmacy and other areas functional or fully functional. So this honorable chairperson is with regard to hospitals. If you allow me, let me say the last slide where I'm just indicating some of the major concerns which we have as the DOD with regard to DPW and then I'll stop here. And, and then if you agree, uh, we can then discuss the other issues which I have flagged. One, we want to indicate that uh, DPW out of that money which we talked as plant maintenance, that is which we are giving the 1.2 billion, uh, where we say that we are not getting any value for money. They have registered 15 years ago, 54 projects, or some of the projects uh, date back as far back as 15 years ago, uh, 54 projects uh, uh, starting from 2005. And these projects, they have already spent 1.12 billion on the projects as uh, on professional fees or what we can call consultants to do the scoping and so on. Now they need additional 1.4 billion where these projects can again be rescoped in order to update the scope. And from our side, we say, no, we, we do not support that one. What we want to do is to go back to these uh, projects where they've spent 1.12 billion and say which ones are strategic for the defense force. And then identify the strategic ones for the defense force. Then we say, uh, this is the priority list. And then we start with priority according to availability of funds. And then we will say to that uh, uh, professional team, please finalize or update the scope on this one and let us act on it within less, a, within, uh, less than a year. And then we can then redirect the funding to go and complete the project. Once the project is completed, then we go to the next priority. At least you are delivering something, unlike just delivering reports. So this is what uh, we say that we need to do. And we, that is what we are pushing in terms of our engagement between ourselves and DPW. So I think I've said enough that uh, if we allow this to happen, we will be spending 2.5 billion, but there will be no or nothing to show after that because DPW cannot tell us when those projects can start and when would they finish if uh, they do get the, the, the additional 1.4 billion. Now, Honorable Chairperson, I'm going to pause here so that we can answer questions. And then the rest of the slides which are after the question, uh, they will be uh, just giving comparison. And then if there is a discussion about our um, observation of the the, that the, our minister is the owner of the facilities of the Defense Force or discussing anything regarding the three hospitals, we can go uh, and discuss. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. No, thank you very much, uh, General. Um, let, let, let me check if Admiral uh, Mopoto is, has joined the meeting uh, because um, we'd want her to come in and complete um, uh, the report on um, the status of the, the, the investigations uh, following uh, the APACUS um, uh, report. And the Adjutant General Mnesi may come in as well, uh, mainly from the, the legal side. Uh, he may want to um, you know, say one or two things uh, as well on, 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 on the process uh, from the time we last discussed the matter to where it is now. Uh, Chairperson, if I may come in, uh, the, the person who's coming is the Deputy uh, PMG, um, who is coming in because PMG himself cannot make it. And I do agree that maybe we can take him first and then he'll be followed by Adjutant General. Then it, uh, it will help then in the conversation, the discussion, because then you would have gotten all aspects that relate to uh, uh, these projects. Thank you. Right. We sent the deputy to Admiral Mapoto is, is who, uh, Sekdef? Uh, Molomo. The name is General Molomo. Gen General Molomo. Molomo, yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, General Molomo, over to you, sir. I'm told it's Colonel Molomo, uh, Chair, my apologies. Oh, it's Kenneth. Okay, no thanks. I'm not the only one who get uh, the ranks mixed up. Uh, I'm happy, Sector. Uh, uh, Kenneth Molomo. He, he, has he joined the meeting, Sector? Uh, I don't know. You maybe you'll be in a position to scan that on your side. I haven't actually checked, but I don't know, Chair, whether in the meantime you wouldn't want to take General Minister West. Probably we check on him so that okay. we don't lose time. All right. Uh, okay. okay, thanks. Uh, Adjutant uh, General uh, Minister, over to you, sir. Honorable Chair, honorable okay. members, uh, Minister of Defense, she was the South African National Defense Force. And uh, SACDEF, uh, good evening. I'm Major General Lemnis, the Adjutant uh, General. Honorable Chair, sir, I will only talk on the on, on, on few issues. But before I, I mean I uh, answer the question as to how far are we, <clears throat> I just want to ask the question: how did we reach this place? Why are we here? I think the answer, uh, Chair, is one, is that often than not, we don't utilize internal lawyers when we do contracts. And uh, I used to be good firefighter, and uh, I think I've retired on that. I need to, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I utilize, I expect to be utilized proactively. But most of the times or before, contracts will be signed, notwithstanding the fact that the minister said all contracts must be vetted by legal services division. Now legal services division gets in long after contracts, contracts have been assigned. And, it's still, and then uh, you will know, uh, honorable, uh, honorable Chair, no matter how good you are as a lawyer, but if contracts were signed and uh, compromised, your clients become, become difficult. As to how did it happen that, notwithstanding the Defense Act being clear with regard to the assets, with regard to the land, with regard to anything of the South African National, of the Department of Defense, being the minister, being in charge of those things. As to how did we transfer that responsibility to another State Department, I don't know. Now, honorable chair, 
Department of Public Works has a contract with a service provider. Now the Department of, I mean, uh, uh, Department of Defense is a client department. Now, if the service provider does not perform such satisfactorily, who should be approaching the court saying, can we put this contract aside and we move on? And appoint, I mean, appointing another service provider. Is it the Department of Defense or is it the Department of Public Works? We, I mean, advise, especially uh, uh, works formation, that write an instruction signed by the uh, <clears throat> by SECDEF where you instruct us to take this matter to court and we see when we, I mean, when in, I mean, in court, so that at the end of the day, we say, notwithstanding the existing contract, but as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a client department, we are suffering because nothing is going on in one meal. Whilst we're sorting out that other, those other issues, if we have money, can we appoint PTY, LTD, so and so to continue with this uh, other project? I mean, first article, finishing the project whilst we're fighting other issues, uh, I mean, uh, out uh, 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 That is, uh, I mean, issue that is, uh, uh, we say, no, we can do, and then we go to court, let the court decide, and we check, we tell the court the stakes that we are struggling, I mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, struggling. We advise that, uh, 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 sir, and we're hoping to receive the, I mean, the instruction, uh, uh, this thing, because, uh, a sec def as a, as a, an accounting officer is the one who's gonna I mean pay for the I mean the legal stuff. So we advise General Lidwaba to prepare that uh, uh, instruction so that we can instruct state attorney to uh, to uh, this thing to brief a uh, council and then we go to we go to court on that. And uh, as as we know, I mean that more days I mean I mean pass by, we cannot even approach now on agent basis. It should be definitely. Should I mean uh, take a long time before we, we even reach at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at that uh, stage? Uh, but currently, there's a contract between the two, the State Department, T DPW, and uh, I mean that other, I mean other company. So, as a client department, we can definitely approach the court as a, as a, I've said. Uh, then on the other issue, I think General, I mean Admiral Makoto should have, I mean, I mean put that the status quo uh, remains uh, uh, the hawks have not come back to us with regard to the finalization of the investigation because the investigation report said we must refer that I mean a double report to I mean a, a, a <clears throat> law enforcement they have not come back to us as to uh, how far are they I mean uh, uh, have, they, have they gone with regard to that so that's uh, the status quo uh, so I will end there sir. okay. So the Hawks have not come back uh, to the department um, with regard to um, the, 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 the criminal case that the department uh, registered uh, with the Hawks. Um, but I understand the criminal case. Uh, what about now the departmental uh, uh, disciplinary uh, procedures? Uh, do you still want to talk uh, uh, to that uh, uh, adjutant general? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable, Honorable uh, Chair. And uh, again, uh, Honorable Chair, we will say, when it involves military people, the only disciplinary process that we can follow is after the investigation and somebody is charged. If the person is charged whilst pending the, I mean, uh, pending the court, I mean, the trial itself, then we can, I mean, uh, take certain precautionary issues like suspension. So currently, up until uh, uh, I mean, the, I mean, the investigation is finalized, it cannot. Uh, it's not like there are uh, civilians because for us, military disciplinary action means somebody must appear in a military court uh, as uh, so. Up until uh, the police or hawks have finalized their investigation, they will decide whether we prosecute. In the military court, they refer the matter to the military court, or they take the matter to the civil, uh, civil, uh, civilian uh, co uh, courts. Uh, at this stage, even administratively, Chief of the South African National Defense Force does not have any powers 
to, I mean, to suspend a person, not like civilians where a person can be maybe a cautionary suspension pending the finalization of the, investiga of the investigation, sir. Okay. Uh, do you want to add anything, sir, Dev, uh, um, before we move to, I take uh, uh, that. Chairperson, can, also, can we also ask uh, questions for clarity on that? Yeah. On, on, on that matter? On, on the matter, okay. Let me allow the clarity. On this one, Marie. Yeah, uh, specifically. Yeah, on, on the correct. Um, uh, General, thank you very much. Um, can I just find out, um, so in other words, you have done, the Defence Force has done no investigation to anybody other than the two people that last time were identified uh, that will be found um, guilty or might be found guilty of dereliction of duty. So in other words, if it's not going to a court in a civilian case, uh, irrespective of dereliction of duty by members of the Defence Force, you're not going to charge anybody or hold anybody accountable or responsible because those two people that we last time identified or, or that we have given the, the, uh, you know, the information about, surely they've got superiors. Surely they had somebody that was, that had oversight and responsibility over what they had to do or what was their responsibility. I find it strange that the defense force of all departments and institutions just don't do any disciplinary, um, um, you know, charges to people. Um, in other words, they can get away with proverbial murder. Uh, and if they are not charged in the civilian court or if the civilian court is not referring it back to a military court, then nobody does anything. I mean, okay. I find that but, if it's true, it's unacceptable. I, I thought this, you, you are right, Mr. Mara. I thought the sector was going to come in on that aspect, um, feeling that uh, the minister, um, the sector. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair. May I just take a step back? If you would recall, Chairperson, when we presented uh, the matter to the portfolio, the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, we actually brought the company that did the investigation itself. Now, amongst other things, part of their recommendation was saying that as the presentation has stated that for a while, the, the uh, project was run by DPW. And then at a certain point, DPW handed over to DOD. And this company, Tektura, was then ceded to DOD. So then when uh, they work uh, 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 before then at the time, then they were working with them and we all now have the report. There were eight officials that came from DPW and the rest of the companies. The company that we're talking about is one company that was then ceded to a DOD. And we have subsequently also established that when it was ceded to DOD, there was a contract that was signed between DOD and that company. Now, one of the recommendations that came out from the investigators, it said, now it's not two officials that are involved from defense. There are four or five, I just need to get the figure right, but they are not less than a, a, a four. It's four or five. I just say, I was just thinking, but there was one name that I think I skipped. There are five of them. When we presented, and in actual fact, Chairperson, you would recall that when we brought the matter before yourself, within the department itself, the minister, myself, and the chief, we deliberated, looked at the amounts that were lost to the department because of the manner in which the project was run. So we all decided that we are going to uh, uh, put the names forward. We are going to put the company forward. When we finish, because of the scale of the problem. Now, when we finish, even we had support from the JSCD itself saying that, uh, because remember one of the recommendations is that take this thing straight to the hawk. And that is what the department has done. So all those people, and if you recall, was that they, they, uh, all those involved 
they were interviewed, they had participated in this investigation, they are aware. We went, we informed them, we are not going to uh, hide the name, and then that this is the course of action we have taken. Subsequent to that, that's when then our military police came into the picture, where they went and then opened the case against all these members of ours, which are five, including the company that was ceded to us, and that is the uh, Yotectura. So that company was ceded there. Now, where does our legal uh, structure come in? The legal structure came in because colleagues, you, a uh, 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 chairperson and members of the, the, the committee and minister. The issue was that the work in, in one meal, especially the first floor, where you have the pharmacy, you have the emergency, and where the theaters are supposed to be, has not been done. And from the, uh, 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 the portfolio committee, we were asked questions, how, uh, when can we proceed? Now, of course, we couldn't have proceeded now knowing what we know. So these things, uh, uh, because all the names and the company are forwarded to the Hawks, we then said to our colleagues in legal, can you please give us legal opinion? Because we didn't want the company to say, look, you approved DBSA, we are going to work, we worked with DBSA on the seventh floor, and now you are coming, uh, uh, you are appointing another company to replace us because you have sent this thing uh, to the law enforcement agencies. Give us the legal opinion on what we need to do. And as we've all heard from the presentation that it is pressing that we proceed with the project, and we know that the arm of justice can be very long, and then we will sit there, and five years is not finalized. Does it then mean that the department can't appoint another company to actually finish the work? Because this company was seated, so we have acted on it. We were required also per the outcome of the investigation and their recommendations that we share the, 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 the report uh, with the DPWI, so that then DPWI can then act on the companies that they have contractual obligations with, and then also that they act on their uh, employees that have been part of this project that came out in that report. So that is where we wanted our colleagues to come, because we were then saying that that is part of the reason why all along we couldn't proceed with that to say that now here is a company, this is what the report says. Now the legal opinion which is coming is basically say that, well, when we look at the, uh, 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 the contract, the contract is valid, they have done their work. But now, it, yes, you, it, there is nobody who says in a contract, okay, in case you commit this. Now we know what we know from the report that these people, they, they even say it was a corrupt relationship, and they say that refer to the law enforcement agencies. Now, we didn't want to sit with a situation where we can be interdicted and then say that, no, you cannot uh, 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 source the services of another company because we were rightfully appointed. And they were appointed by virtue of them being ceded to the department, and that's why we were asking because we said, and we had a long meeting, I think uh, uh, around March or, or so, uh, where the chief was there, I was there, Silok was there, General Idwaba was there, and then we, we said there, we said, let's ask our colleagues from legal to give us a legal opinion. So that is what I wanted him to give us the, uh, 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 from their side as lawyers, put it in their own way. When they look at that contract, what do they say? My issue is that despite the us having a contract with them, the fact of the matter is that now we sit with a report that is fingering them and that even uh, says that you act by forwarding this to the Hawks and open the case, which is what our colleagues from uh, uh, the military police have done. So that's why I thought that uh, they'll be here. Yeah, probably Kenel Mulomo has logged in now to then say, what is the status? But my fear is that we don't want to wait uh, seven years down the line. We are still waiting because then the, the, the legal 
processes have not been finalized or they say the matter is sub judicate and then we can't do anything. That was what we were requesting our colleagues uh, uh, to deal with that. I must say that I hear the other points that he's raising. One of the issues that we know for sure is that in the department, when you look even retrospectively, there, there has never been capacity to actually deal with contract management. And that's what we were saying that within our legal division, we need uh, to actually address that issue. So that then when contracts are issued, we diligently follow up and know what is happening. So that then if there are problems, we are able to nip them in the bud. We don't find ourselves in the situation that is described in this presentation. So those are the points I thought I should make clear, HFSN, uh, before maybe uh, the, the colleagues from the military police come in. Okay. Uh, let's check if um, General uh, Colonel Lomo has joined. Uh, are you in the meeting, Colonel? Uh, Chairperson, I just want to say that that question of mine uh, was obviously not addressed. So hopefully that will get to that in terms of clarity. Now we are coming back to all the questions, Mr. Murray, including the questions that you think have not been addressed. Uh, Colonel Molomo, are you in? Chair, yeah, Honorable Chair. Yes, uh, uh, General um, uh, Ken Kenel Mulomo is struggling to log on, so he just uh, 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 called me, <laughs> but uh, he gave me information as you give me time, I will uh, just come and answer, uh, I just give clarity on one thing, sir, but he's struggling to log on, sir. Okay, all right, L let's continue uh, discussing, let's take uh, questions. Um, uh, colleagues at this stage, uh, Mr. Murray, you are first and any other questions? Uh, sorry, any other hand, colleagues? Uh, chairperson, thank you very That's much. A, just just before that, I just need to okay. get a sense if there are more uh, hands um, on, on this issue. Okay. You are the only person on this issue, uh, Mr. Murray. Thank you very much, Chair. Just that, that uh, one question that I've had um, with regards to, you know, what is the process for disciplinary actions in the Defence Force? Um, and as I've said, it, it, it's very, very concerning that if something, if it's not a case where it is reported to the Hawks and they agree to investigate, and if they eventually referred it back to a military court, if that, if that is not the case, then uh, as, as a general has said, then uh, no investigation is taking place. So uh, no disciplinary action. And uh, I find that hard to believe that the Defence Force is acting like that. If that is the case and if the law, if the Defence Act is the problem that nobody can be put on suspension because of dereliction of duty or at least on the, on, 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 uh, um, on the evidence of prima facie evidence, uh, on the support of prima facie evidence, then, then obviously we must change that because that means that, uh, you know, Defence Force members can be, can be ill-disciplined uh, and they can get away with that. So, so that is very, very concerning and, and nobody has responded to that. Just in terms of a general questions on, uh, on all three military hospitals, I just wanted to know um, whether whether um, they can give us an indication of the general occupancy of the three hospitals. Um, so, in other words, that will give us an indication to what extent is the is the is the military hospitals used for the purpose it is there, and then in terms of resources, uh, and I'm and I'm thinking of obviously finance, uh, equipment staff specialists, to what extent is this, is those resources are that 100% being provided in? Uh, and, and if that is the case, you know, what is the levels of, of those, um, those resources? Mr. Mare, uh, I, yes. you, before, let's, let's, let's stick to the sense of uh, uh, the occasion. We're discussing issues infrastructure. Yes. Um, I know you want to deal with the staffing, you want to deal with the issue of uh, uh, occupancy and all that. W why can't we pack those issues for the time when we deal with the 
the, 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 operation, the operational side of the hospitals, or of the three hospitals. You see, they came prepared. Remember, we, this is a, a team that is works, a formation team. And so they did, it's like our public works. Uh, they came prepared just that. Uh, I know that, but, but they but but they're giving us certain information and and money spent to be spent to justify, and and as if it is justified, we must decide, um, and then alternatively we must have a situation where the the surgeon general and the military hospitals comes to us and say these are the amounts to be spent. Our occupancy is fifty percent or forty percent or thirty percent. They're not they're not they're not in the meeting because um, the items that are on Chair the agenda. Chairperson, you are prescribing to me what I can ask and what I should ask. Please don't do that. Uh, I mean, I've got hey, reason hey, why can, I'm can, asking the no, questions no, no. Hey, that no, I'm no. starting to ask the questions. Mr. Mare, Mr. Mare, I'm I'm saying you you I I'm not prescribing. Okay. You do. But you, you do. listen. Listen, you, you must understand, yes, listen, listen, you must understand that the team that is in the meeting is called to deal with the, to, to brief us on the infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure yes. side. Yes, exactly. No, 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 I do no, not no, agree listen. with that, but let me go on. Let me no, no, not waste no, further time. No, oh no, listen, Mr. Mare. Listen. No, listen, no, no. Listen. That's unacceptable. Listen. listen. Um, we are dealing with the infrastructure side. Yes, of the sir, I know that. I'm, so not, I'm not stupid. The team, listen, 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 listen. I've prepared the myself. I've prepared team, myself. Listen. listen. I've prepared myself listen, for this meeting. Listen. listen. No, no, no. We, we are going to invite, this is Marie, this is Marie. We are going to invite the South African Health uh, Military Health Services under the leadership of the chief of the of of, of that department uh, of SAMS, you know, the Surgeon General, to come and deal with all the issues they are mentioning. But you may not get, I'm actually cautioning that you may not get the answers to the questions you are raising. You may continue though. Uh, so you must decide then uh, give me guidance in terms of what I must ask and what I can ask. Because, I mean, if you look at three military hospitals, um, you know, then, then, it's, you, then it's senseless to have certain um, input on, on, on infrastructure and you cannot ask the questions to justify us to spend the money uh, on, on this infrastructure. So um, I'm going to see whether I can park that. Just the one question on all three hospitals. Are they on the properties of the DOD or on DPWI? Because that gives the, the, the and I know that it has been said that the, you know, the minister is kind of the owner of all of these, but is it DPWI properties or is it DOD? And then in the past, the clear indications over quite a number of years that was given to us is that Defense Works Formation will take over all the functions of DPWI. Now, according to this information, it doesn't seem so. On one military hospital, it is only the first floor, basically, that DPW, or the Defense Works Formation will take over. The rest will be, still be done by DPWI, and we will stick with the frustrations. The same with three military hospitals, and the same with two military hospitals. So why can uh, Defense Works Formation not take over all those work, because the work that they themselves cannot do, they can subcontract. Whether it is to the same contractors that would that would have uh, contracted, been contracted by DPWI, or whether other subcontractors, why can't Defence Works Formation not manage that themselves? Because that was give, that was the promise that was given to us over over a number of, of meetings and years. On the two military hospital where they say that there's still an outstanding SL, SLA. Um, what is the reasons for these SLAs that is, this SLA that has not been finalized? And, and, and when will that be done? And, and what will be the impact of this outstanding SLA? Um, because clearly, you know, it, 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 there's, there's too many 
there's too many bosses around and not too, you know, not all the people is doing the work and it's not in synchronization. Then on a one military hospital, um, there's a number of things that I would just want to ask on that. Um, on the Tectura, and I know that has been reported to us in the forensic, that was the executive summary of the forensic uh, investigation. So we never got the full, uh, invest, full uh, forensic investigation report as we were initially promised. I just wanted to know whether um, any meeting was convened between the DOD and Tectura. Um, and in the case of, of the, you know, the investigation, the, the case that was apparently open with the National Prosecuting Authority or the police, whether we can get that case number. I'll tell you why. And as you know, I normally do my own, own research and I do my own investigation. And some information that I've picked up on this specific case seems to contradict each other. One of the things that I have in writing is that the Hawks deny that they investigate Tectura. Now, somebody is not telling the truth, whether it's the Hawks, whether it's Tectura, whether it's the DOD, who, who, somebody is not telling the, 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 you know, the, the whole story to us. If the Hawks has got a case number and they must investigate, then they investigate. But if the Hawks deny that they've got a case to investigate against Tectura, then we've got a problem. Um, so, so I want to know whether they've met and whether there's anything that is that is in difference between them that they can that they have, can sort out to prevent us from ending in the court case, because for us to end up in court cases and spending millions on on the legal fees, and then eventually it has to be settled out of court, or even if if a company like Tectura uh, win the battle. You know, it's going to cost us money that that will be bad value for money. So I just want to know that. Um, and then I I wanted to know in terms of the legal processes because um, I I it was it was a bit confusing to me because we've got legal services, but it seems like we are a. a um, uh, in, this, in this situation, because initially DPWI started with a process of outside legal uh, lawyers on the contracts. I don't know if I'm, my assumption is right and if I read it right, but that we just know, you know, who has been um, not looking after our, our interests the best. Is it the legal advisors of DPWI or why are we not involved? And because it has been mentioned that, that, that we should do it ourselves. And I was always under the impression our legal people is, is, uh, is looking after that themselves. Um, then I just wanted to find out one more thing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the other thing I just wanted to find out, that cost to complete. Um, how was that done? Because um, we must know the cost to complete uh, one military hospital, whether it is that 1.5 billion to 2 billion rand. If we know the cost to complete, um, and that is obviously where other departments or other sections of DOD will come in, it is no purpose if we are happy that, that you know, it can be completed, but we have, do not have the money. If we do not have the money, Nothing is happening. Everything stands still. So either SecDiv or someone we must at least tell us that, you know, we will do that and it will happen. Then just on uh, slide 11, I just wanted to get to slide 11 quickly. I've got a question on that. No. No, so thank you, Chair. I'm I'm happy so far. Oh, the 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 whole matter of of leases. Can we ask the question on the on the leases as well, or is it just the hospitals? Chairperson, Chairperson, you you are muted. 
As long as, Mr. Mai, as long as it relates to the three hospitals. Well, I'm, I'm talking about the presentation. No, it's fine. It if it was on the presentation, you may do ask a question on it. Yeah. It specifically relates to slides 20 and 21. Uh, I know that, you know, the presentation wasn't done with us in detail, but it's part of the presentation. So if I can go to, to, to slide um, 20, where it is, is, is specifically dealing with the DOD devolution of functions and, and the impact of leases. So um, I want to know, specifically on, on slide 21, there, there's a graph and then it says, this portfolio urgently need a financial injection to address the shortfall and to implement the DOD lease replacement strategy. And lease costs will ex ex escalate to over 1.2 billion rand over the next five years. Now, nobody has addressed that, but I've picked that up on the presentation. And, and, and my question is then probably to, to SECDEF in, in the absence of, or to the minister in, sec, in the absence of anybody else, we have experienced that long time ago about the St. George's um, Hotel that was that was leased for, I've read, 10 million rand a month. If that is the case, and, and this slide is true, how did it happen that we can lease properties like that at, uh, at the 10 million rand a month, and then probably there will be expenses for, for capital works and and infrastructure within the in, in the hotel as well. How did that happen, and how do we justify that, uh, given this specific slide that we do not have money for leases? Um, I know for a fact that there are, for instance, spare capacity at at military academy. They are not 100% occupied, and if there are facilities in the defence force that is not 100% occupied. Why don't we use the facilities, some of the facilities that we've got, that is facilities of higher learning. Um, uh, and, and, and how do we justify then, you know, paying up to 10 million rand a month for one property that doesn't belong to us. And, and, in, the same and in the same slides and presentations, it was also referred to the fact that we are, are, are leasing properties and we don't own that and therefore we we, we have, have got such an enormous um, a lease um, um, obligation and, and, and accountability. Uh, I'll stop there. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay. You still want to put uh, your questions on um, the operational side of, the, of things? No, you, you, you made a ruling that uh, in terms of operational, we must have find another find another um, Time for opportunity it, yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when the chief uh, of SAMS, the South African uh, Military Health Services is in the meeting, we will we, we'll arrange that, uh, Mr. Mare. Okay, person, just, just the one request that I've got yes, is that sir. people must come prepared and not then tell us they will have to get back to us. No, so they're prepared. Warn, warn, warn them, them. Warn them. No, yes, no, that's fine. Fine. that's fine. But they prepare uh, according to the agenda items. So we must indicate if we want more information um, ahead uh, before they come, Mr. Mare. All right, colleagues, that, that we've done. Uh, um, Sekdef, uh, uh, I would invite you to deal with those uh, a few questions before we move to the next uh, item. Over to you, ma'am. Chairperson, um, I understand that we have Mr. Mulomo that has been able to connect now. I don't know whether you wanted to talk to him, but I would defer the, the questions to General Lidwaba. Uh, we came here prepared at least on the issues of the, the, the request of the committee on one mil, two mil, and three mil. Because on some of those ones, like the occupancy rate, I think it's information that we can get from a, 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 the, 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 the Surgeon General. So I think that uh, 
uh, uh, what I will do, I'll ask General Letova to, to come in. But I, I understand that also Kenel Mulomo has been able to log in now. So he will be able to confirm that. But as uh, uh, we had this meeting, I also spoke with uh, uh, um, Admiral Mapoto. He confirmed to me to say yes, the Dura plus the five uh, members of DOD. The cases have been opened, but I would allow a uh, if you would allow, thank you. Okay, but okay, it's fine. Um okay, uh, let, let's let's deal with uh, the questions that have been placed on the table. And then once we are done, I would invite um, uh, uh, Kenneth Mlomo to uh, give us that piece uh, of information. That Maybe. Is that, 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 that in case uh, it generates further questions, uh, uh, Sector. Chairperson, can I just say that, uh, for instance, where uh, they were uh, asking, uh, Honorable Mare was asking about whether DOD will take over the functions, will they do all the functions? When we, um, uh, as uh, General Jitwaba had mentioned, when I came in in 2020, we formed a task team, and that was uh, uh, led by myself and the DGDPW. And then from our side, we had General Jitwaba who was heading it, and then the DPW also had their own person who was heading it. The issue was then to work, work out a roadmap of how we are going to deal with this devolution. And the reason why we were doing that is that there was a SCOA meeting of 2018 where it was saying that defense must take over this uh, uh, do the devolution of immovable assets back to DOD. The fact of the, uh, uh, the matter, uh, Chairperson, is that, yes, probably we were also a little bit sloppy from our side because then uh, 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 most of these properties, actually, their situation deteriorated, their state deteriorated rather than getting better. And now what we have been doing is that as part of that devolution, we have also drawn out a roadmap of how we want to build our own capacity in-house. Now, it is not all the capacity that we have now because and also we have a uh, dynamic problem the way we are overspending on COE and then we need the other one. But we then said that, uh, and, and I think we have shown with the other projects that even with the uh, little capacity that we have, we have managed some uh, projects very well. And some of them were, were initially quoted 2 million, we were able to complete them having paid only 70,000. And the quality of the work was very good. So it is the intention of the department to finally, I mean, some of the, uh, uh, the uh, functions have already been devolved to us. And then we were dealing now uh, the race in Texas, and I think now we're dealing with the municipal bill. So those are the things that we're looking at because then um, we thought that when we build our capacity, the, the fact of the matter is that we may not have all the capacity at a go to be able to say we will manage all of those. But again, the issue we have been talking about here is that for us to also deal with that. Now, as part of this task team, we ask our HR people to sit in it. We ask our legal people to, to, to sit in it. And then also our colleagues from the log environment to look at it. Because then the idea is that we must cover all aspects that need to be looked at. And even in actual fact, in those testing, we have uh, colleagues from public service and admin that sit, and then also from national treasure. Then what the, uh, the plan is, is that whilst we are building this capacity and with the little capacity that we have, when we then go through a, a contracting, we must do a good job of it. And, I, and, and, and as I mentioned that within the department, we don't have contract management expertise. And it's something that we are looking into so that then at least, because a uh, chair, the fact of the matter is that um, um, it is shown that if you uh, appoint companies that know what they are doing, like we did with the seventh floor, there was never even any query from the AG. So it shows to us, and with a, a, a seventh floor ICU with 78 beds, 
we paid 155 uh, uh, million to. Colleagues, have I lost the sector? It seems we all have chair. Good evening. We, we, we all lost there. Oh, okay. uh, uh, to be looking at, and then also we can't devolve at a go. But right now, at the point of devolution, Sector, you are breaking. Um, so I'm missing some parts of. Uh, Yes, I think we keep getting cut off a uh, chairperson. My apologies. We we keep getting cut off and then it connects again. So we have devolved up to six hundred million. Remember that we were giving a DPWI one point two billion in a year to to do all those things and do regular maintenance and repairs that need to be done. But we see that our facilities rather than improve, they've actually gotten worse. So I think that uh, with this devolution, we cannot allow a situation where we would even be worse off than what where we are at right now. And also because of the state of this, it makes if it impacts on us delivering on our mandate because then you also have soldiers that don't live in the cases now. So, so I would hand over to General Lidova to take the other uh, 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 question. Thank you very much, Sektef. Uh, General Edouard. General Edouard. Honorable Chair. Yes, uh, Honorable Chairperson, I'm on the stage. Yes, uh, General Minister. Oh, yes. Okay, over. Shall I continue? General Dover? Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, yes, uh, yes, General Dover, may continue. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, I really appreciate this. And then let us just uh, say that uh, for the questions which have been asked, uh, largely uh, based on slide number, um, what is that slide now? Let me just open this appropriately. Can I be heard, Honorable Chairperson? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Let me just go to the slide which Honorable Mare was referring to, so that uh, as we speak, we are able to then understand what we are talking about. Yeah, this is the slide. Honorable Chairperson, First of all, uh, like we said, the DOD and DPW have been engaging as far back as the 2017. At that time, we have a very functional uh, task team led by um, a, 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 a task team head from DPW. And when we went to present to the Standing Committee on Appropriation, that is the two ministers, Minister of Public Works and our minister, when they went to declare to, to present at the Standing Commission Appropriation, we all presented a joint presentation, which joint presentation addressed the issues of devolution. Commenting uh, Honorable uh, Minister Nasha uh, at the time indicated that I do not know, and it is there, I do not know how these facilities landed in my lab. Defense Force must take over this. And there was an agreement at the, at the Standing Commission on Appropriation. Fast forward, when we were supposed to be addressing these things, including the list of the hospitals uh, and the particularly Bloomfontein infrastructure, which the committee visited, it was found that uh, the, the then chairperson, co chairperson with myself from DPWI was reassigned. And then, having been reassigned, that, uh, uh, that uh, 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 co chairperson no one, was, no one was appointed. And when we said to DPW, because these task teams are formed of, uh, we have got this, a, a strategic task team and the sub-task sub teams, 
Let us continue, even if DPW has not appointed anybody. DPW said that, no, we are not going to continue until a task team head is appointed. Having said that, it went to, uh, up to a point where then, uh, uh, lastly, another person was appointed in DPW as the task team head. As we were gaining traction, that person was also reassigned. Then the last one is the one which was appointed by the SECDEF, the current SECDEF and the, the acting DG then of DPW to address exactly the same thing so that when we appear in front of forums like this, uh, we should be talking the same language. I'm giving this background because uh, there is no dispute when you look at the legal framework that uh, we are the owners. The Minister of Defense is the owner. And I want to just read you the extract, of both from the Defense Act and from the Guillermo Act, and, and also from the Constitution. From the Constitution, I'll just go to the 1996, not even going to the prior Constitution of 1993, because that one also was addressing exactly the same thing. But if you go to the current Constitution, um, uh, 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 there is a section 7.4 of Annexure D of Schedule 6 to the Constitution of Republic of South Africa, 1996. And it provides as follows. Subject to and in accordance with any applicable law, the assets, rights, duties, and liabilities of all forces referred to in section 2242 shall devolve upon the National Defense Force in accordance with the direction of the Minister of Defense. So the Minister of Defense must determine whether she wants to give away the facilities or not, according to this uh, constitution. But then the Defense Act comes very clear. And let me read the section of the Defense Act, which was enacted in uh, 22, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, 2000. General Edouard. Yes, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, I know, um, I, I saw from the beginning that you wanted um, to convince us uh, why um, this function must come back to the department. We have no problem with that. Uh, we're not going to argue against it. Uh, it's the Minister of Public Works who questioned um, the, 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 the decision behind the transfer. And uh, I, we are not questioning it. So I, I, would, I would ask you just to move from that, uh, 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 what you call uh, angle and, and deal with other issues. In fact, we, we agree that uh, the, the, all departments want to do their own works programs uh, because of the short works uh, uh, of the Department of Public Works. So would support the, the, the DOD uh, doing its own works program. But the Minister of Defense, um, Memo Disa said, uh, yes, but take on that which you can do. Don't uh, ask for things that yourself, you don't have the capacity to, to, to do because you'll end up embarrassing the department. I agree with, the, with her comment. Correct, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I wanted to deal with the question of Honorable Mare because it seems to be suggesting to say that, that we do not know where we stand. So the Minister of Public Works is the owner of all the hospitals and all facilities occupied by the Defence Force. And those were outsourced, as I've, I've, I've discussed in slide number five, by uh, uh, virtue of the recommendations of the 1996 uh, Deloitte and Tuesday research, and I'll leave it there. Now, Honorable Chairperson, um, the, the direction of the minister said take over, but remember, Honorable Chairperson, the minister is actually building capacity for us to be able to take over everything. But she says, don't wait. Take over what you can take over now, provided you have the requisite capacity to be able to do it. And that is exactly what we are doing. And I can also just indicate um, in one of the slides that we have started that and we have introduced efficiencies. Then, uh, so we say that uh, we, we are ready to take over, but another guidance was, please do due diligence on anything which you are taking over so that we must not bring the risk 
which is a risk of DPW and uh, uh, make it a problem of the defense force. So this due diligence, we said that uh, we will finalize it be between now and April next year, where we'll be taking over everything. But for now, those um, areas which do not need any uh, or do not, have, do not have any questions, we have already taken over. And the said has just indicated that uh, we are taking over now after the municipality services, we are taking over the rates and taxes where we have capacity. We already have a capacity and we have shown. Then we're also going to take day-to-day -day maintenance. Those have got no contracts in DPW and therefore they are not going to be an issue um, requiring any further due diligence. We have done that. Now, in terms of um, yeah, that, that answers then the question of which uh, you, Honorable Chairperson, has also uh, highlighted to say, what is the position of our minister? I think it is very clear that we are taking over. The capacity has been built. And as it, been, as it is being built, we are taking over. And the target is that by 2023, April, the DOD will have taken over everything. Uh, let me then go to the issue of two military hospitals. Uh, I think, uh, Honorable Mare, maybe there is somewhere where uh, uh, he did not understand. There is no SLA. Two military hospitals, we said everything has been done. We are happy we signed off ourselves after intervening. But what is remaining, which we had instructed DPW to proceed to do, it is a total facility management contract. Which total facility management contract is going to take care of the maintenance? Like if you go to one military hospital, I've indicated to you that uh, although the UPSs are not functioning, the generators are able to kick in and therefore prevent any um, uh, uh, failure of electricity. It is because we've got a total facility management there, which it was our initiative to say to DPW, put up the total facility management, and we are happy with the one which is at one military hospital. Now, uh, let me go to the issue, question number four of Honorable Mare, where he's talking about um, Tectura, that is forensic investigation, any meeting with Tectura and DOD. I think this one, uh, uh, it is an issue which is being addressed between the Ashton General and uh, Tectura, and then I think it will be uh, able to resolve that one as, as soon as possible. But the question is, do we need a meeting or do we need action? And what, what kind of action? I think that is what uh, the Ashton General is applying his mind on and his team. And this will be resolved uh, from that point of view. In terms of the hawks, that uh, they did not, they, they, they do not have, or they are not investigating at all. I suppose um, my colleague from the military police will indicate that uh, indeed the hawks are busy. I personally meet, met them two times. One, them alone. Two, I met them with uh, the SIU, who are also looking at some of the issues, and they had some questions. So we are confident that they are doing that. And because the military police, it is a competent authority to assist with investigation, uh, uh, we understand that they are cooperating together with the hawks. Um, Honorable Chairperson, I'll go then. Um, that uh, the issue of going to court, I think that one will be uh, the issue of um, uh, the Adjutant General. I'll jump that one. Um, now, Honorable Mare asked about the leases. Now, let me bring uh, to the attention of this body that uh, the Defense Force, seeing that we've got a runaway lease, lease portfolio, there is a strategy which we put in place and the plan is in place for us to be able to build facilities on our own land. To this, to this, uh, uh, to this extent, we have already identified stable areas within the, the Tabatuan area, and including um, Savalco, where we are going to be building offices, which will then be cutting the lease portfolio tremendously. Now, uh, we have already engaged to the extent that we have met with the Department of uh, Water Affairs. We have um, uh, already put a, a Council for Geosciences to do an investigation on uh, the stability of the areas which we have chosen. 
and the reports are coming very positive. So we are going to be building our own facilities in order to arrest the runaway leases. But on the chairperson, what is important here? The SEDEF has just indicated that uh, there is money now which we are taking from BPW. A caution is that money must not come and subsidize these leases because then we will not be moving. The leases requires a financial injection. The reason being that as far back as 2015, the leases were funded at 300 million and that has never increased. And the DOD had to continuously subsidize the leases. And this is not sustainable. And that is why we are bringing this to the fore in terms of the leases. Honorable Chairperson, let me quickly go then to the slide which talks about directly about the devolution of functions, which I think uh, it will address most of the, of the questions by Honorable Mare. Um, let me just uh, uh, take this down. Now, that one uh, uh, which we need to talk to is, let me just say, uh, where are we? Let me. I'll, I'll move it into, I want you to go to slide number slide number 20. Um, we'll just go to slide number 20. I was trying to move this. It's not, uh, it's not moving to slide number 20. Okay. Let me talk to slide number 20, Honorable Chairperson. I think you've got a copy. The, the, te the technology it doesn't want to move. But on slide number 20, we have just highlighted three things. One, the DOD has already taken over municipality services in 2020-21 financial year. And we have already made a saving of 355 million. We said 350, but it doesn't matter. We've already made a saving of 350 million. And the said that has directed that the CFO must engage with Treasury because this money becomes a, a visible in September, October. That Treasury must agree to roll over this money so that it can be utilized in, in April next year uh, uh, to do the facilities. And then, because we need to validate that indeed we are saving this money, or if it becomes 300, that is fine, uh, uh, a treasury must agree to roll over this for three years to validate that indeed the, 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 the water and electricity bill per year, it ends up there. And then we will be able to, uh, to do that. So this is the function we have taken over already because we have got capacity. We also have a capacity to do day-to-day -day maintenance, where we say that if we want to actually take this 340 million of day-to-day -day maintenance, do a value judgment, because for now we do not see where this money is going to. Do a value judgment and say, where can we invest this money? We might have to invest it on emergency projects, and we have many times indicated the risk which is there at AMES that it needs to be addressed urgently. We can do that. But over time, the same amount of money, once you have addressed some of the emergency issues, should be available to address the, the lease portfolio, which is uh, uh, running away from us without any additional financial injection. The next one, Honorable Chairperson, is uh, number three, where we say, uh, where are we going to use the money? I think I've already spoken to that, to say, where will we immediately use that money? And the rest, I think uh, uh, it is a question of saying that, um, that we will be registering projects and then going ahead. Now, if you look at, uh, which is not here, but during our presentation last time, we indicated our takeover program, where we say that there is another other projects which were registered by DPW under the, uh, the heading uh, refurbishment within the, 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 plant, the, the, the plant maintenance, which is about 314 million. We say we are going to interrogate those projects which if they have already uh, uh, commenced with the projects between now and next year, uh, that is uh, ourselves and DPW, hoping that uh, the task team will not continue to be dysfunctional. And uh, I'm afraid I think it is done purposely. Then having done that, because they must give us data, we'll interrogate that data and then you say, this project we are taking over, that one, because it has got legal problems, for example, we have got the, the messes, keep us all mess, they were registered in 2014 and so on. And keep us all, Army College, Engineer Formation and Havera. They are stuck. 
they are not moving. So those are the kind of things which we are going to be looking at and saying, where will be, where will this money be utilized for value for money? And then of course I've just indicated AMS and uh, to resolve also the dolomite issue of Tabaswan, which if not addressed, Tabaswan will uh, will disappear in front of us into sinkholes. And one thing which I I, 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 I we said to DPW because they are now registering a project where they want to close sinkholes which are which are already existing. We said no, put the piping system so that because the dolomite are caused by the bulk water services which are, are leaking underground. So put new piping system, stabilize what it is there before it also falls in. Then we can look at the, at the, at the, at the sinkholes which have existed already. But to try and fix uh, the sinkholes, we're not going to, to catch up. So Honorable Mare, these are the answers regarding to your question as to where are we going in terms of the leases. And we are resolved to resolve this issue of the leases before they run away from us. Honorable Chairperson, thank you very much. Chairperson, can I, can I just yes. make one, cor one correction? Slide, okay. seven, slide seven clearly says, the total facility management services level agreement in brackets SLA still need to be finalized to ensure continued repairs, maintenance and support. General Adwaba said it has been finalized this your your presentation says different. So that's my okay. question was comment, based on comment, that. Comment general. Uh, general, uh, just uh, deal with that uh, so that we can then invite uh, the next. Uh, uh, I'm here. I can I can answer. Yes, general. I, uh, this one, the service level agreement, I think it must be a, a, a typo. The total facility management, uh, 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 what is it, a, a, a pro project program or whatever, like we have at one military hospital. I apologize, Honorable Mare. No, uh, it's two military hospital. It's two military hospital because yes, it says that, that that is unfunded. You said it's unfunded. No. Uh, let me let me let me correct that. We said DPW must go ahead and finalize the total facility management as we have it at the one military hospital. And then I think where I say it is unfunded, I think uh, uh, it will be a, an error from my side, I apologize, because yeah. DW has not even given us the cost, because we are going to be part and parcel of uh, doing due diligence to make sure that the, one, the total facility management addresses what we what we want to be addressed like we were part and parcel of the discussion of the one of one military hospital once we are satisfied we will then fund that 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 thing because if we do not fund it it will be wrong because the facility can deteriorate back particularly when you talk of the hvac system the mechanical and electrical systems so you need to make sure that those things are maintained by professionals before uh, they deteriorate and and become a major cost. Thank you very much. Okay, so you you are covered, Mr. Murray. Uh, I'm covered, although person. you know, although I'm not quite satisfied because what is in the presentation is 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 the opposite of what what General Duaba said. So either the the presentation is wrong, or the answer is wrong. So I don't know why the presentation is wrong. Thank you. Okay. No, it's fine. Uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, at least the uh, corrections uh, have been uh, effected um, to the report. There may be one or two other that you, you may still be corrected, but maybe you, we, we can then leave it at that for now, as long as they're not, not fatal to the presentation that uh, is before us. We'll then invite um, uh, uh, Kenel Molomo to uh, then uh, complete the, 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 the input. Uh, Chair, Sekdev, uh, members of the Joint Standing Committee, thank you for the, uh, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, I was struggling and frustrated by the connection. Uh, I want to give uh, them a feedback with regard to the one military hospital REM project. 
The case is with Directorate Crime Investigation. Uh, the inquiry, it is 02 stroke 09 stroke 2021. I submit. Okay. All right, that's the piece we, were, we have been waiting for. All right, let's leave it at that. <clears throat> uh, colleagues, uh, I think we, we I, I should thank the, the department, uh, SECDEF, uh, I should thank you uh, for the fulfilling the, all the, uh, the answers. Um, I don't, I'm not too sure if there is anything that you still want to say or the minister um otherwise uh, we are done with this item uh, so uh, through you chair please yes mr mafanya yeah i i, I thought uh, you would also open up uh, uh, this uh, question time for all of us because uh, the reality is that mr mare was the only one who engaged with the with the with the presentation and then I was of the view that uh, all of us are going to engage with uh, the presentation at some point, uh, because there are quite a lot of number of people who may have wanted to talk about it, but because of the, the time ticket that they have been taken, and then uh, you could even hear the answers that uh, the answers are more directly to what Mr. Mare was has raised. So I, I don't know uh, how, how you feel about that. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought uh, <clears throat> I opened the platform for questions, and uh, the only hand that uh, showed up <clears throat> was Mr. Mare's hand, uh, and there was none. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, Chair, I went through, through, through you. It, it was where you had a dialogue of some sort, where we had to give you both space so that you ventilated these other issues that you had a concern on. I, I understand. But had it been that we were given more time also to interact with this thing, it could have been much better for all of us. I understand your point, but there was a, that heated moment where you had to, to deal with the matter and then it had to be Mr. Mare uh, actually engaging mostly with this. With this. I, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just saying it. Uh, there is a slight concern on my part. Okay, you may ask uh, your questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shay. Thanks. Uh, the, 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 the issue is that uh, we have two ministries, the DOD and uh, Public Works. Both, both the departments uh, have got their own budgets. Now, the question that I wanted to know, where in the Department of Public Works goes attend to DOD matters? Do they use their own budget or do they use the DOD budget? If they, they that, that is the one question that I wanted to know. Number two is the, on the issue of the cases, because there's a lot around the issue of military hospitals, but which in particular, there must be a pointed way to say on this matter, on the, expenditure, fruitless expenditure. Here is an investigation that is pointed to these individuals. So we should be knowing what are the hawks investigating? Who are they investigating and which area? Because the reality, if you, you look at also the leases, they need to be a proper explanation to say, how dare you go for a, a 10 million 10 million rental space, whereas you could per month, you could be saving to build your own. So such kind of decisions in, in, the, in the scheme of things, they need to be a probe, uh, you know, there should be a probe on certain decisions, but equally, because there seems to be a contestation between the public works and the DOT. So from where we sit, we know that the both ministries met at some point had a memorandum of association and understanding. And here we are, we have been told about the things that happened and they took, that they continue to happen. So if we could get clarity on whose budget are these things happening, in particular from the 
public works and the DOD. Thanks. Um, Secretary, can you deal with the, the, the question on, on budgeting um, uh, side of things? Chair? Uh, yes, Chabo. Okay. Uh, uh, I just want to request that maybe I also post my question so that when they respond, you don't have to come back to questions. You, you, you were also closed out by Mr. Mare. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chair, um, if, if I may come in, I just want to say, I, I don't know, today I think from the Secretariat side, they, we are really struggling with the audio because then as the person talks, then uh, it goes off and then it comes back and then we've missed the, the bigger chunk of what uh, is being asked. <clears throat> So even I think with the with the uh, honourable Mafanya, I didn't quite catch everything. Okay, I think the question from Mr. Mafanya, Fanya in short, uh, Sekdev, was that for all the projects that uh, Public Works is doing on your behalf, and uh, are they doing it from their own budget or they're doing it from your own budget? And how then do we move funds uh, between the two uh, between the two departments? That was the question in crisp. No, thank you, Chair. You, you want us to respond, or you are going to take honourable Mutle? Um, uh, let me take honourable Mutle at the stage. But did you get the question? Yes, I did, Chair. Thank okay. you. Thanks, uh, honourable Mutle. All right, thank you very much, Chair. Maybe in addition to the question uh, uh, around uh, the, the funds, uh, who avail the funds to DOT, uh, in addition is the responsibility uh, by the department as an end user or a client for these projects to be delivered the role that they play. Uh, it's very worrisome that uh, the department uh, uh, tends to behave like a complainant uh, in these projects that uh, they are a client or they are, they are a client and my understanding is that uh, is them who fund this project and you can't put your money uh, and shut your mouth. Uh, there's a saying that says you put your mouth where your money is. Therefore, that saying seeks to suggest that uh, uh, the department should have an upper hand in terms of the decision making of the pro of the project uh, uh, and its progress. Therefore, there's some something is not right. Uh, you can't put money and at the end and uh, and complain uh, as if uh, you are not responsible. What is it that uh, they are intending to do uh, differently to address that matter? Uh, because uh, from one mil to three mil, uh, it's more or less the same challenges. Uh, of the department not uh, being part of the processes of uh, uh, implementation of this project. Hence, we find ourselves in a situation where uh, things went uh, wrong in, in all those projects. If you remember, Chair, when we went to, uh, I think it's two mil in Cape Town, the officer commanding there uh, complained that uh, uh, they were not a uh, consultant in terms of uh, the medical equipment, uh, technical aspects of uh, 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 the renovation that were taking place there. Therefore, which created a challenge in terms of those uh, medical equipment uh, technicalities. Uh, as much as they say the project is completed, it was not a smooth project as a result of uh, the department disengaging 
in a process that is solely their baby. So you go to one meal, it's uh, more or less uh, the same problem. And the other thing is uh, this consultancy uh, uh, fees, which by law they are regulated to be at the certain percentage. For them to blame uh, uh, the Department of uh, Public Works and Infrastructure uh, whilst uh, they are the ones that uh, give this department money and they have to ensure that they monitor the processes of uh, implementation and all the payments because they will remain accountable in terms of uh, expenditures of these uh, uh, resources. It doesn't help to, to say we have uh, given the... Department of Public Works and Infrastructure money, and then we sit back and uh, at the end we complain like anybody else. It will not help. What is it that uh, they have done and what is it that they have learned out of these processes and how are they going to mitigate? And I know that uh, currently they are in, they are, they, they will be using another agency. Uh, but if the other agency in a form of uh, Development Bank of South Africa does the same thing, what is it that, what measures have they put in place to ensure that they mitigate such a, 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 a discrepancies? Thank you very much, Chair. I'll, I'll post there. Thank you very much. Uh, another victim, uh, Mr. Shelembe. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chairperson. I'm sorry I missed a lot because of the network. I don't know what's happening here in Akasha Park. I don't know where is my house or something. I try to go out. But uh, Chair, maybe I may ask something that has been asked. Um, um, but Chairperson, just something that maybe uh, that I'm worried about, if I can get the clarity. Uh, you know, there's something that I saw there about that uh, it was sort of a project and manager too uh, that was... Um, paid, uh, say, about uh, 14 million rand instead of uh, 4 million rand. Now, I'm checking, Chairperson, if uh, the person is still alive and if he's known, what stopped the department now to apply that? I mean, uh, maybe his accounts, I mean, are, are put on hold uh, until, I mean, uh, that money is recovered. Because if it is true that, I mean, 14.5 uh, million was spent instead of 4.1 million, I don't know what action has been taken as a quick uh, reaction to ensure that this money does not appear. Because if, I mean, uh, that, that's my concern, that money that, you know, is making a headache to, to anyone. Four million, the person was paid for 14 million. Uh, I don't know whether this was uh, clarified, but I was going to uh, suggest that if it was possible for the department that the accounts of that company, I mean, uh, is put on hold until that matter is uh, resolved. Uh, I won't go much, uh, as I'm saying now, uh, Mr. Lord, I may be repeating what has been asked uh, uh, when I was uh, outside the platform. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I want to put this question again. Have we exhaust, exhausted all the hands? Okay. It looks as though we've exhausted all the hands. <clears throat> You are, you are safe this time around, Chair. <laughs> yes, thanks. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mutle. Uh, Sekdev? Thank you very much, Chair. I will uh, answer some, and I must say, uh, Chair, my apologies, because really the network is so bad. So with all the speakers, uh, I had to lose them uh, in the process. Chair, the, uh, um, when you, uh, uh, you read the, the uh, at least the Abacus report, you see that the project really went badly. And I think that uh, uh, Honorable Mutle is correct, you know, because then we were uh, asking, you know, after our facilities. And I think when uh, that was done, we sort of uh, pulled and, and, and stood back. I don't think that we had the eye on the ball. 
And then even when you go and read the other cast report, it will even tell you to say that what was a, a Sam's expectation of what will come out of the project um, was a facility that is maintained, that is repaired, that is serviced, that has all the equipment that complies with all the Are we losing her, colleagues? Yes, we lost her. We lost her. Okay. All right. It looks as though we lost her. <clears throat> uh, I think the network is not good on their side. Um, I think so. Def, I can see she's really trying, um, uh, <clears throat> but unfortunately, we can't hear her. I'm back. To, I I got cut off, and then it reconnects itself again. But I think it's that side. So, you, you, uh, you, 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 were, you were actually saying that um, it's true what uh, uh, Tabo Mutle is saying that. You, as a client department, you can't just simply walk away. So you 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 they, you you drop the ball, and that is even mentioned in the report itself. I'm agreeing with that, Chair, because if you also see at the the, the presentation of General Lidwaba, it goes back from 1996 when they were doing part of this work. At the point where they ceded over to the department, it was in 2016. So it means for a, over a 10 years, they were running with that. And in that, a, 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 at that point, that's when things went wrong, a, a just generally from the facilities point of view. And then it was even at that point then when that Tektura was ceded to us that uh, we were starting now to relook at the things. So what I'm agreeing with is that, yes, from the onset, we should have had our eyes on the ball and we didn't really uh, 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 do that. What happens, Chairperson, is that on an annual basis, we have an amount of 1.2 billion that is set aside for regular maintenance and all the work that needs to be done. And, and also uh, for municipal services, rates and taxes and all those things. As the presentation of General Lidova said, we have already taken over the municipal uh, services functions uh, last year. And then we want to take over now um, and the rates and taxes. So once we do that, we would have actually devolved from DPW up to an amount of 600 million. And now also with the, with the, with the capacity that we are trying to build, we are not where we are at and we are not going to have all the capacity that we want. But we are also saying that from a department's point of view, we need to deal with our contract management in a much uh, a better way to uh, deal with that. Now, the one, um, uh, so <coughs> the money is held with. Also, cautious to say we don't devolve so speedily that we also don't have sufficient capacity to deal with that. But uh, and, and in any case, uh, when we, we dealt with part of one meal, it went successfully. We utilized whatever a, a resource, a human resource capacity we had, and then they worked also together with the DBSA. So it is something that we are constantly looking at. Because if then there was proper management from the onset, we probably shouldn't be sitting here. We shouldn't even be having that conversation. But already, I think that the department then realized that we are in trouble. And that's why then in 2016, they, they, uh, they started to have uh, that discussion. And that's how then uh, this company was handed over to the department uh, so that then we work with them. So I, 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 that's why I'm saying that I take the point because we're not talking about only uh, like five years ago or whatever. It's something that has gone over a period of a, 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 a 
10 years or even more than that. So it has been quite a, 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 a process um, in dealing with that. Now, as I said that we have formed this task team, the task team is precisely to oversee the process of that devolution. And as it was being said is that, yes, we are doing it gradually. We have done some of the facilities ourselves and we have actually, even in certain instances, we had asked DPW to say, quote us. And then somewhere there was something they quoted us 2 million. And then we actually did that. And the, 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 the quality of work was very superior. And we had spent actually about The yes, sector has disappeared again. Sector, you have disappeared. Do as a result of doing regular and scheduled maintenance, that uh, did not happen, and that's why now uh, we 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 we're saying that let's see how we deal with some of these things, and and of course I think that. Even uh, 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 with the companies that, like the DBSA, which we are using, we are then saying that you contribute. Part of the condition is to contribute in creating, um, a, what do you call it, in helping the department create its own capacity, a facilities management company, and also uh, to grow our work formation. On the other issues, Chair, let me hand over to uh, General uh, General Lidwaba. Thank you. Uh, General Lidwaba. Honorable uh, Chairperson, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much. I think uh, <clears throat> there's no question, and I fully agree with the SEDEF on the issue of saying that uh, the, the department uh, took the eyes off the ball, and that is why it is captured in uh, 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 slide number five, where we indicate in slide number five, paragraph two, uh, where we say that, uh, that our capability, when we decided to outsource the function to DPW, uh, that capability, that capability um, was then uh, <clears throat> dissolved which we had 107 built uh, management uh, professionals in slide number five. So honorable chairperson, it is true that there uh, we made a mistake. And that is why then there is a, a push from the defense force to say that uh, let us correct this. And we are correcting this in terms of uh, 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 establishing this capacity. Uh, the question regarding to say, where is the money? It is true. The money is with us. We give it to DPW. DPW, like the SEDEF has just mentioned, the 1.2 billion, we are giving it to DPW. And there is another slide there which I have shown where we have said that in 2018 financial year, up to 17, 18 financial year, they understand our money at 1.9 at 1.9 billion. Uh, on the same projects, which uh, 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 <clears throat> did not succeed, and at that time, that capacity was not there. That is why, if you recall, <coughs> The defense was established, what the, the defense was formation, and that was established uh, as starting as a project, so called Project Levaga. And then it built up to defense works formation. And this Project Levaga has produced artisans who are doing very good work. And some of the good work which I've indicated in the other slides, which are there, is exactly done by the artisans and uh, with the supervision of the little um, uh, professional capacity which we have. Now, uh, I'll jump the question of the hopes. I think the military police will be answering that one. But I need to be very clear to say that when we saw infractions ourselves, that is, as the defense works formation, and myself particularly as the project manager with regard to the, the, the people who were involved at one military hospital, we actually reported this case to the, to the hawks. The hawks did an investigation, and the hawks interviewed Tektura interviewed the, 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 the person involved, and now 
the military police has, has picked up the, the pieces because the Hawks investigator uh, at the time we learned when I met with the Hawks uh, uh, now this year, we were told that that host investigator has resigned uh, from, from the service. And, and they are picking up those pieces now regarding tectura and involvement of our member. Whether there is a case or there's no case that I cannot talk to, the military police will then, as they go through the, the paces with the Hawks, they will be able to provide the answer. So it must be very clear that uh, <clears throat> the, the Defense Force acted immediately. And one action which we took when there was infractions, we immediately requested the Surgeon General to, to remove uh, the, the persons who were involved from the project, and uh, we continued. So uh, it, 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 I, the, I would like to remove this notion that uh, the department did not act. We acted swiftly. Now, um, when it comes to uh, the money which we give to DPW, I think I've answered that one. There we are at fault because, like I say, we blame DPW now. But indeed, one argument we are putting is that our minister is, is, is uh, the, the facilities belong to her. We take money and we give it to DPW. They do whatever they do. We do not. Uh, we did not supervise them because of lack of capacity. And I think it was in good faith in 1996 when they entered into this contract because uh, Deloitte and Tuch said, "Why must you continue to have this capacity, which is taking your your, your compensation of employees?" when DPW has the capacity to be able to do this. So the Defense Force uh, got uh, bought into this rationale and they outsourced this. The same with the, uh, the mechanics as I have indicated. And now we're regretting and doing something about it. Now, the question that, what are you doing about it? I think the minister must say, my, the minister says that, yes, I know of these problems, we've created them, but I'm resolving them. And part of resolving them is recreating the capacity as I have done. And that capacity has shown that it can deliver. I mean, the saving of 355 million, by the way, we say 355 million. I didn't disclose that uh, we were paying 50 million to DPW to manage water and electricity for us. That money, we stopped paying. And we have hired people who are doing that function at less than 50 million. I think it's about 20, 25 million. So, it is actions, tangible actions, which the department has taken. Uh, now, let us talk to the issue of DPSA. The issue of DPSA is not outsourcing the function to DPSA. And the seventh floor is a very good example of what we have done. DPSA did not uh, execute the seventh floor alone. Our limited capacity was there in the form of the engineers like in the form of uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kretla Panierian, who's a structural engineer, and a team of our uh, uh, professionals who still need to be qualified to get uh, their, 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 their ability to sign off projects. They worked very hard. And uh, where they could do the job, we didn't give it to DPSA. We did a job, gave the product to DPSA, and there was a discounting of money for that purpose. That is why we were able to install the UPSs at uh, the theater, operating theater, so that it must work. That is why we were able to fix the kitchen where the dishes were washed with hands. Now it is functioning. Out of the money which uh, was the total budget money for the seventh floor, and we delivered the seventh floor professionals. Going the way forward, currently what we are doing with DPSA, we are doing a proper audit, skills audit of our professionals to say, who need to be trained and in what area. And that proper skills audit, uh, which we are doing with DPSA, we are going to then, uh, as we register projects, our professionals, uh, or let's say, if you talk in terms of, uh, uh, if it was a hospital, our, our qualified doctors, if, we, if, if, if I give that example, who do not have, who are not yet qualified in terms of practicals, that is, in this case, our engineers who have got a, a, an engineering degree, they will work under the supervision of DPSA and get their registration. But in that period, we will be delivering facilities. So we're not afraid that uh, we are going to be uh, abusing any money in any way. And we have seen that the capacity to be able to account 
uh, by DPSA. It is unmatchable. If I give you an example, the Auditor General requested that uh, we must provide information, including to, to the receipt of how much do we pay for this, how much do we pay for that, in terms of medical equipment, some of which we bought abroad. DBSA was able to provide us that information within less than 10, 10 hours of request, and the Auditor General was satisfied. This is the kind of capacity we are beginning to establish. If I were to tell you now, the DOD has already spent money on creating what we call the build management information system. To ourselves and together with CETA, we are going ahead with this and we are working hand in hand with DPSA. So there's a lot of work which is happening and which is going to make sure that we are able to account for every single cent we spend on a project and deliver the project professionally between ourselves and, and DPSA. So there's no doubt that this time around, we are going to take our eyes off the ball. Our eyes are continuously on the ball. Now, uh, the honorable member indicated that uh, on the question of a project which was um, a, a four, uh, paid for 40 million, million instead of 4.1 million. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the, the facts on this. We will appreciate if that can be uh, given to us because we do not allow such things. Uh, then we would be able to question that one. But this one we are unable to, to provide answers to because we are not aware. And then we will appreciate if we can get uh, this, um, uh, um, this information so that we can act on it. Honorable Chairperson, uh, that is all uh, in terms of the questions. There is one which I didn't answer. Uh, which I think that uh, it talks to the, the issue of the hawks. I've just spoken in terms of the portion which uh, the Defense Works Commission has done in terms of making sure that uh, no infractions is allowed within the projects which are run by the Defense Works Commission or by the Logistic Division. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, Colonel uh, Molomo. Uh, Honorable Chair Sekdev, uh, thank you for the opportunity given. The Hawks are investigating the whole realm of the military uh, hospital uh, by the Directorate Crime uh, Priority Crime Investigation. I submit, sir. Okay. All right. No, th thank you very much, uh, colleagues. I think we've uh, exhausted all the, uh, the, the issues uh, pertaining to the item uh, on the agenda. Um, surely, um, we we are still outsourcing uh, uh, services uh, to uh, private uh, health uh, care providers um, at uh, high cost, uh, which services uh, 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 could be offered by the three um, uh, hospitals. Uh, we've received a report that uh, uh, two military hospitals in um, uh, Cape Town, the department has taken that one over and they're happy with uh, uh, the work done there and means that there is no issue uh, any, any longer. Um, I think we can put that one aside as a, a complete um, exercise. Uh, but the two hospitals, it's one military hospital and the two and and, the, and three military uh, hospital. Those two remains a, a source of concern because um, they drain our uh, resources uh, unnecessarily. Um, I mean, when your X-ray uh, is not working optimally, um, X-ray it's critical for your doctors to and nurses to perform uh, further uh, services um, or, or specialist care. Uh, so without that, it means that people would still be uh, outsourced to um, uh, other healthcare uh, providers. 
And um, so I think we need now to have a meeting with the senior management of uh, SAMS, the South African Health and Military, South African Military Health Services, uh, to come and uh, talk to us uh, briefly uh, um, <clears throat> on the extent to which uh, uh, these uh, things that um, have been reported uh, here today, uh, the challenges in relation to the two hospitals uh, continue to hinder uh, the provision of services uh, in those uh, hospitals. Maybe it is at that point where we can still talk to them about um, the operational efficiencies uh, within the, the two, um, or, or of course, all uh, three uh, military hospitals. Maybe we can leave it at that for now and thank the, the minister. Chairperson, yes, sir. Chairperson, maybe just before the minister, um, uh, will it be at that stage that my issues will also be addressed? And uh, what must I do with my questions um, for that meeting? Must I forward that? so that they can prepare themselves for that? Or how should we do that? That's the one issue. And maybe just before the staff are leaving, if my information is correct, this will be the last meeting that uh, Major General um, or, or General um, Ladwaba is attending uh, our meetings because of my information is that he's leaving the employment of the Defense Force by the end of this month. So uh, maybe this is also then a, a good opportunity to just thank him for his service. Uh, and I've always had very, very cordial um, responses from him. And uh, it's a pity that we are losing people like him, but hopefully he, his legacy will live uh, long after he has left us. Thank you. Uh, oh, thanks. Uh, is, is it true, uh, Secdef, that uh, uh, General, I don't know who's going to talk to this one, that um, uh, General Lidova um, would be leaving uh, the department before the end of this year? And this may be the last meeting uh, he's attending. This month, us. end of this month. End of this month. There is no one to answer that question. Okay. Uh, Minister, uh, your last word, uh, if you are still in the meeting. Chairperson, yeah, just on the last question, it is true that uh, General Ledoba will be retiring. Um, uh, we thought that we might be able to, at a particular moment and a meeting which is not as hot as today's meeting um, would have had the chance to bid him farewell. But uh, as you said, Ndatemare, what the, his contribution to uh, his contribution towards the wax formation will always be remembered. Um, from today's meeting, it is quite clear that uh, defense has tried to wake up a little bit too late. And when you wake up a little bit too late and you have lost um, very critical skills, it is difficult to claw back in time. But what is also important is that we should say that in the years that we lost the critical um, skills, um, and we handed over everything. And we might say that those of us who were around in the 90s, when the Deloitte and Touch report was being brought to us, Chair, were uneasy, tried to talk to the executive then about the impact of Deloitte and Touch. These are the results. Because what it did was emasculate and render the defense completely into something else. But the defense must still take the responsibility and um, I must take the responsibility because I think in, in, in those years of uh, where we had formed out our responsibilities, 
we did not do the simple things, have a warm body that is responsible for each project, reports, scrutinizes, follows the runs and check and, and sends. And at every uh, 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 budget um, discussion, there is a report which can then say to us, things are going in the right directions and things are not going to the right directions. What we now know is that we have learned lessons, but what we still resist doing is to accept that we need to effect some changes amongst ourselves to do the right thing. So it's, 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 a, it's a little bit difficult when you have set um, behavior and set beliefs. Um, and because now and then a voice comes out and says, guys, we have to change here. Um, and indeed we start a good project like the works formation. It, it will not be perfect in the next five, 10 years, but to tell you the truth, they have wonderful skills in there. If it is members of the Defense Force who designed and have IP that is developed by the country, but is not fully exploited and owned by the defense, then we have issues. So I'm, I'm thinking that in the long term, we're still going to have a bit of a problem, but that uh, also um, in the long term, if we start taking heat, if we take everything that you are saying to us, and we actually start uh, correcting that in the very long term, maybe in the next five, 10 years time, that the Mare critical skills will have been developed. The warm bodies will have been there. The, 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 the behavioral changes that we need to do within defense will be there. Because also you do not correct things when you have um, a, 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 some leftovers of, well, we are in a ledge because some of the bad things that is happening in the defense is when sometimes the military says, if we don't take this into our hands, things are not going to happen. But when they do that, they come against the laws again. So, so we are in that fix where we need to nudge ourselves into the right direction, but sometimes stop nudging and stop pleading and start whipping. So I do not agree at all that um, people who wear uniform are ranked can take wrong decisions um, and there are no implications that can be done. So yes, we own Tatemare some explanations. We have listened to you carefully in Tatemare, the, the issues you have raised. The only problem is that today, the people who should actually be responding should be responding. I've not had the privilege of being briefed by the Hawks on the, 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 what they are doing. And therefore, for me, it is still hearsay. I have not. And you would have thought that in a, a situation like this, you would hear something. I must also tell you that I've got a very interesting letter that comes from Tektura, who expect that they will automatically be uh, uh, taken back into this thing. I have not responded because I'm taking legal advice on the matter, but I will do whatever I can with my little two bit sense says, this is the wrong direction. You cannot go on this way. And even if we want to continue with the, the development bank, I am very clear, unless we are on our guard, what went down in the Tektura, the, the DPW, a days will continue even under the, 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 this bank, unless we have people who we can trust and people who we can hold accountable. So let's hope that we will have another session where we'll be able to give the responses that the committee expects from us. Uh, respecting that it is not about yourselves, it is about the country, it is about us. And unless we start looking at discipline within the, the department generally, unless we start uh, again going back in Tatimulomo to what should really be serving under a strictly defense in terms of discipline and what actually belongs to the civilian courts, um, draw the line and begin to free the chief Sandaf to act. 
and and sometimes to even push him to act if we need to do so because it has to happen so so chair i think it it was not an easy meeting for us today but it is one of those meetings that uh, we need to go through but if we don't learn anything from what the the inputs were today before the committee then we're not learning um and that is why I am determined that uh, we will not be in this situation again. If it means we go back, retrace, find faults, deal with those individuals. We came to, before you uh, months ago, Chair. We said to you, those members who are uniformed, who were involved in the debacle of the one mill will be followed. We said that whoever it is in the civilian uh, outfit will be followed up. And that we must make good so that we, we don't say something and, and then renege or, or drag our feet on it. So Chair, we commit, give us space, uh, let us go in uh, and have our own little housekeeping. I think I would invite the Hawks to come and give me a briefing on what is going on, because I'm not sure that they can speak to anybody else except to, to me. That is a very interesting thing. Uh, so I will follow up. I will come back to the committee. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Minister. I think that's the good uh, note to end this meeting. Let me thank you uh, for your attendance. Um, thank uh, your the Deputy Minister, the Chief of the Defense, as well as the, the, the SecDef plus all other members. Uh, of the of the department um, for the uh, discussion tonight, I think certainly we are learning something from from this exercise, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> that we we can't just say, look, we are not going we are going we are not going to do anything. There is wrongdoing uh, in the department um, instead of uh, invoking uh, disciplinary measures uh, within the department. We refer matters to courts that take uh, edges, uh, uh, to the police that take edges before they come before the court. I mean, just recently, uh, you know how long it takes for a matter to become a court rate. When, if we had invoked disciplinary, internal, uh, internal disciplinary uh, measures, we could have simply uh, dealt with the issues uh, because uh, uh, the evidence is there. Um, uh, and so I, I think I, I agree with Minister that it's, we need to tighten up the screws uh, at, the, at that level. And, and otherwise we, 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 we must say all, we, there must be no disciplinary uh, uh, matters within the department and then leave everything to the courts, to, to the police, the SIU and, and, and the courts and uh, let them run, conduct the disciplinary uh, matters within the department, because we, the senior management don't want to, to act when there's wrongdoing. They don't want to discipline their own colleagues. That's where the, 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 the problem is. So we really want to leave it at that. Uh, I hope that, I mean, we, 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 we're happy that the minister has uh, referred to this matter and it's um, uh, it's receiving the matter is receiving attention. Colleagues, we'll close it at that uh, for now. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. We we as we uh, let the team of the hook uh, the the DOD of the hook. Um, we can then continue with the uh, the last item or the last two items. Them committee matters, largely. So the departmental team is free to leave at any time when they wish so. Um, all right, uh, 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 who's, who's taking us through the committee report? Uh, is it Peter Daniels or uh, Dr. Janssen van Rensberg? Uh, once again, good evening, Chair, and good evening, members. Uh, good evening. This will be a joint presentation between myself and William Chair. Okay, please go ahead. Um, thank you, Chair. I'll just uh, share the, the presentation. Um, is it visible, Chair?
Is it possible, Chair? Can I continue? Yes, it is. You can continue. Ah, uh, thank you, Chair. Given that we you don't have much time um, and that the document has been uh, distributed, if you don't mind, Chair, I'll just uh, emphasize uh, some of the main issues. Um, as members are aware, the Joint Rule 120 um, said that the Joint Committee should conduct a strategic review of the SNF midterm in the life of a particular parliament and submit the recommendations to both houses on five issues, transformation, integration, equity, morale, and defense readiness. I'll quickly cover the four uh, first items and then William will cover the last one. So Chair, um, we are focusing on the committee activities from the, the, since the commencement of the sixth parliament in July, 2019, when the chairperson for the PC and the co-chairs for the joint were elected. So we are looking at all the issues that the two defense committees have been involved in. That is now briefings, oversight visits, and discussion. Chair, so when we come to the first issue with regard to transformation, one will note the um, reference in the white paper on defense in 1996. Um, there they say in chapter two, under the heading chain challenge of transformation, and then various issues are then discussed. Uh, similar to that, the 1998 defense review, they also focus um, on transformation and looking at various uh, issues and especially issues that we've also recently covered like the force structure and the force design. Um, and then they're also saying they, uh, in chapter nine, for instance, with regards to force uh, design, you know, they're covering three major areas such as civil military relations and members of the member, we had the colloquium on that. They're talking about normative and cultural transformation something I'll refer to later as well, as well as organizational restructuring. And then more currently, there was the 2015 defense review and they've also referred to um, transformation in various aspects. But one thing they do exercise, emphasize is that with regards to the reserve, the transformation had actually been a bit slow due to a lack of investment in uh, the reserves. Um, the other issue that they cover is uh, personnel management. And then they specifically, they cover personnel policies, processes, referring to career management and succession planning issues that we've recently covered uh, at the joint as well. And then specifically, they are also referring there to the personnel budget, um, the cost to, to employ, of employees, which is something that William will refer to later. So Chair, we've covered this when we discussed the um, succession planning issues with regards to career management, and just saying there, there are some of the principles that should be followed. Firstly, it should promote the transfer of skills and competencies. And then secondly, individuals should take co-responsibility for their own career management. And then career paths should be effectively communicated. And then importantly, they're saying that succession plan should actually be available two years in advance. And then commanders and line managers must be actively involved. So in conclusion with this section on transformation, we're just saying that it remains a concern that these issues are not being effectively dealt with. So later on, Chair, when we come to the observations and the recommendations, we will then make recommendations to each of these issues. Um, Chair, um, integration is the next issue identified by the joint rules. And it says there, firstly, um, you know, 1994 with the integration of the seven structures. And they're saying there that the integration process was an important step in stabilizing the African military environment and aligning it with the democratic political uh, dispensation. Um, Chair, as we are aware, uh, the interim constitution then made a uh, 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 provision for, for, for integration. And then more importantly, it was the Integration Intake Act of 2001. It was terminated and then it was repealed on uh, December 2002. But as members are aware, there were attempts um, like, for instance, from the Khoisan Nation Self Defense Unit to integrate into the Defense Force. The committee has dealt with it extensively, and then we found there was no legal provision for this. But I think the important thing to emphasize here is that given that 28 years have passed, and then many of those who have integrated are solely exiting the system, lesser attention is being paid to the issue of integration. And we know when Dr. Candile and Professor Tesla spoke to us, they referred to various phases. And the one phase, or the first they first to was between 1994 and 24th, they focused on integration. And currently there's a focus uh, 
on, on transformation, diversity, professionalism, and so on. And that is between the period of 2015 to 2025. Okay, and then the uh, white paper on defense also referred to, 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 to integration. Um, and I think the important point to stress is that they say it's a powerful symbol and practical demonstration of our country's commitment to national reconciliation and unity. And then they are just saying there at the end of that paragraph, sir, failure to meet this goal of, a represent, of, of in integration, you know, will critically undermine the legitimacy of the SNDF. Chair, uh, with regards to this also, um, no mention is made in the department's documents um, where they actually list, you know, the number and the gender of former uh, members of the former uh, military structures. Um, and although we are aware that the Department of Military Vets has such a list, I think this is maybe something we should engage the Department in the Defense Force on. So then say um, another thing related to integration was related to our committee observations. For instance, the oversight visit in the Western Cape in October 2019, um, where some of the members raised issue. And one of the issues, for instance, raised at Nainsai was say there was discrimination against former NSF members in favor of MSDS members intakes. And when we went to the Air Force Easter plot, there was a concern with regard to the treatment of former NSF members who seem to be disqualified when it comes to selection to officers' courses. Our oversight visit to the Gauteng basis. Um, there we noted the issue of gender representativity. Um, very few females were, were uh, uh, present, and we said we need to see an improvement in this regard. Chair, there was also an issue raised by the Defense for Service Commission, and that is that there should be a review of the force number allocation system because there was dissatisfaction with regards to the ranking and utilization. But on this call, in 2018, the Joint uh, Committee actually heard from the Defense Force uh, Service Commission um, through the DOD that this recommendation around force numbers is not implementable as it has a potential for the loss of critical historical records. This perceived discrimination is also timely. So, um, the third issue is just with regards to, to, to equity. And there we refer to the 2015 defense review. And one of the guiding pr principles is that the defense force should be broadly represented of the people of South Africa with due consideration being into matters of equity, including gender and otherwise uh, enabled person. So we had various presentations by the Chief Director of Transformation um, uh, they, they, they discussed this issue with us. Um, Chair, so the Defense Review also refers to uh, this issue of, 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 of equity. But if one starts looking at the personnel statistics here, and I'll go through this quickly because later on we have a combined table on this. But there's the figures on this page where they just list um, you know, the, 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 the representation of the various groups, males and females, and according to those uh, uh, population groups. So that's for 1996. And then later on, we just list the, the end report of 2018-19, 2019-20. Um, what are the figures there? Um, and then the 2020-21, the figures there. And Chair, uh, yeah, I just want to pause a little bit because this is basically a summary of all those tables. Um, what we found is that there is a mistake in the annual reports because if one start looking at May 1996, what we'll see this grouping, yeah, the second group there in the third column, they were, for instance, the, the males there were 6,555, the next, and the ladies were, or the female soldiers were 623. The next year it dropped, the males dropped to 677, and the females to 304. The year after that, it increased to 6,000, and the ladies to 2,904. And then the males in the year 2020-21 financial report, 5842, and then 2892. And if one looks at the current um, annual report that has just been submitted to us, it is very clear that for the financial year 2018 and 19, as well as the financial year 2020 and 2021, that these figures are wrong. The groups have been changed around. And why this is important to us, anybody that wants an official document from the department, such as an annual report, 
um, you know, uh, uh, if they do research, they'll find these figures and I think it should be corrected. So later on, we're making a recommendation in this regard. Chair, but just to summarize those uh, tables, um, I think we should maybe look at what the chief director they said, stating that the DOD is gradually progressing to be seen as a represented, equitable, and agenda aligned asset for RSA. There's significant increase of Africans from 38% in 1994 to 76% in 2020. A notable decrease of whites from 45% in 1994 to 11% in 2020. And then colors and Indians, uh, the colors decreased by 4%, Indians remain constant. So Jay, the other issue we want to raise is something that the joint has also uh, picked up is that with regards to the MSD intake in the recent years has not been fully represented. And what we're saying there is, should this trend continue, it will pose a challenge to the SNRF to keep its staff company generally representative of this African people in future. And especially if we're talking about the region of a nation, you know, from the bottom up, you know, we do believe that it should be as representative as possible to have a really representative top structure later on. Chair, so there's just some issues that the Chief Director of Information Management has, has, has listed. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about before I hand over to, 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 to Valyalam Chair is the issue of morale. And we're saying there that morale of souls is a critical ingredient for any military, especially at repairs to conduct operations. And that both defense reviews refer to this. And just, just making one, one or two uh, uh, observations here, uh, how important, for instance, defense for service commission, the interim one, found this issue. Um, for instance, the problem that with regards to transport, they say it needs to be, be addressed to enhance the morale and the dignity of soldiers even the total wellness of the DOD. So there are many drivers for low morale, which have been observed. And it remains a fact that despite everything, our soldiers and the civilian counterparts continue to perform remarkably. And then Chair, we just say they're referring to the Defense for Service Commission, what they have said to us in March 22, and say in the recommendation, there's a specific category dedicated to morale. And these related to salaries, conditions of service, and the revision of policies on conditions of service that are cross cutting various aspects of morale. And we say that uh, it further says that the morale, for instance, that under, proc under procurement, similarly, as I said earlier, there, with regard to transport and total wellness, um, when it comes to, to, to morale of soldiers, it's important that they are provided with the right equipment at the right time in the right condition. So procurement is very important for the morale of soldiers as well. Chair, I'll leave it for that and I'll hand over to Valyalam Chair. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, uh, Peter. Uh, Valyalam. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, Peter, for that. I'm just going to share uh, my screen as well. Uh, Chair, is it visible on your side? Yeah, yep. Yes, it's visible. visible. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair and members. The, uh, the last thing I'm just going to pick up where Peter left off. Um, so Peter presented four of the elements that is required for the Joint Standing Committee of Defence to report on back to the Houses of Parliament. The fifth um, aspect that is a requirement in terms of Rule 120 is around defence read readiness. And following the same uh, uh, layout that Peter used uh, earlier on, uh, first look at where this comes from, and there's legislative directives around defense readiness. For example, the 1996 Constitution says that the primary object of the Defense Force is to defend and protect the Republic and its territorial integrity. Similarly, Defense Acts make provision for the training institutions to ensure defense readiness. And this then plays out in other legislation as well and other policies. For example, the 1998 Defense Review uh, it states that care must be taken not to open strategic gaps in the capability of the, of the SNDF when reducing force levels. And this was according to the 1998 plan to significantly reduce the, um, the uh, main SNDF force and focus on the reserves. The 2015 Defense Review uh, also focuses a lot on, on defense readiness, specifically in Chapter 9, where it lays out uh, uh, the trajectory of defense of the country. And it notes that the defense force uh, to sustain itself at the strength and readiness levels that are required to meet standing tasks and identify contingencies. 
So there is a basis for focusing on defense readiness, and this basis is found in legislation and policy. So moving on then in section 7.3, what has the committee uh, been looking at? And in this whole report, we focused on the Joint Standing Committee of Defense because this is the Joint Standing Committee of, uh, of Defense report, but we also took a lot of elements from the Portfolio Committee of Defense, given the overlap that there's often between the work of these two committees. Um, so what did the committees look at in terms of uh, defense readiness? And the first thing we saw in this committee, specifically in this committee, is that it's been an increased reliance on the SNDF. This committee has looked at a lot of internal support um, deployments of the SNDF. For example, the letters considered around the, the Fall River uh, uh, deployment of the SNDF, deployment with the police in the Western Cape, the COVID-19 deployment, the unrest deployment, and the uh, recent deployments following the flooding in Guazulu Natal. That's a lot of increased reliance on the SAND for internal deployments. And this comes on top of the existing border safeguarding uh, function that the SAND um, fulfills. And that's one side of the increased reliance. On the other hand, you've got uh, still a reliance on the SAND to fulfill its external deployment uh, uh, duties. And here you have the participation in the DRC peacekeeping mission, more recently the participation in Mozambique and the Operation Copper in the Mozambican Channel for the Air Force and the Navy. So um, what this says is what the committee has also picked up is that there's an increased reliance on the SANDF, which puts strain on the force to maintain high levels of defense readiness. Because of all these activities, it impacts on their training schedules. It also impacts on their equipment and their hardware. And it detracts from efforts for the SANDF of the SANDF to maintain a conventional military defense readiness posture. So in the context of having more to do, what do we see happening with the budget? Um, members are very familiar with this. We see a stagnating defense budget that is decreasing in terms of percentage of the GDP. Um, here you can see just over the, the this uh, committee's um, time in office, it's decreased from 0.95% of GDP to 0.76. Um, percent of GDP. Uh, and this impacts negatively on also on the domestic defense industry because there's no funds for acquisition. Um, and an industry in itself is also an important part of having a, of defense readiness. When you have internal capability to produce military hardware, um, that is a big bonus for defense readiness. Um, and this is something that due to the uh, decreasing defense budget, that we are perhaps losing. So these two sections say we are, the, the defense force is required to do more with less in essence. But there's less money, but let's look at the committees have also looked at how the defense force spends its money. And members are also very familiar with this. This graph comes from the 2015 defense review. And members can note here that from 2010, the percentage of, of, the, of the defense expenditure spent on compensation of employees has increased um, uh, dramatically. And by 20, um, it was at 40%, it, it got by 2011, it got to 55%. And as members are aware, by 2022, we we're standing at 68% of the allocation uh, being spent on, C, uh, on that. However, the committees have looked at this uh, in depth, both these committees, um, and the committees have, uh, the portfolio committee, suggested a mobility exit mechanism um, be funded. National Treasury actually uh, uh, acceded to this committee recommendation and they provided funds for this. And also, the, also um, the committees have requested the department to focus on other plans to reduce irregular expenditure on compensation of employees. And this has been presented actually again this week to the Portfolio Committee uh, of Defense and perhaps a very positive uh, impact that the committees have had is to get an undertaking from the Department of Defense that they plan to stabilize uh, compensation of employees expenditure within three years by 2024-25. Uh, and this remains an ongoing area of oversight for the Defense Force. So when there's more spending on, on uh, compensation of employees, it implies that there is less funds available for prime mission equipment. And this also has a direct impact on defense readiness. Um, any uh, any military in its conventional 
military sense requires well-maintained and prepared prime mission equipment. And the committees have looked at issues around this. For example, key issues that, was picked, that were picked up um, include the SA Navy frigates and submarines that are in urgent need of a midlife upgrade. The committee also looked at the SA Air Force uh, with their limited maritime patrol capabilities. This was picked up in 2019 during the oversight visit there. There's also been a lot of focus uh, by the committees on the SA Army's upgrading of its infantry fighting vehicle, the RATLs, Project Hoof ASTEM. Um, there's also been quite recently discussions on maintenance constraints, where we saw a, rep a report by Armscore on the availability of aircraft with the Gripen fighter aircraft being unserviceable for a very long time, very limited serviceability of the C-130 transport aircraft. Um, and the positive is that there is now maintenance contracts in place for most of these aircraft again. But as one can see, there is a real concern around, around maintenance and around prime mission equipment, which ultimately affects your, um, uh, your combat readiness of your force. There has been in the past also BRRR recommendations by the Portfolio Committee uh, for the midlife upgrades of the frigates, uh, but National Treasury did in the past not accede to, the, to this request. And perhaps that's something that the um, Portfolio Committee can, can focus on again. Also, coming back to the earlier one, if, more, if this funding is less for the Defence Force and more is spent on compensation of employees, there's less for equipment, and less money available for equipment, and there's also less money available for training. And this is the, the committee has also looked at this. If one looks at uh, the Air Force's flying hours and the SA Navy sea hours, you can see since 2015-16, uh, uh, the sea hours, for example, have decreased significantly um, over the years. And similarly, the flying hours have decreased uh, in the two most recent years. They adjusted the target to include all flying hours. But one can see that they, even over the last two years, there has been a reduction and the Air Force didn't meet their targets for, for flying hours. And this is important um, to note because training, as the Defense Act says, training institutions and training is important for defense readiness. Uh, the committee also noted the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact that this has on the DOD's training uh, program. Um, so generally that speaks to a reduction in training due to a lot of factors, uh, funding being a major one, and the internal spending, and that impacts on your, your force readiness. Um, chair and members, then just to run through it, there's, there's not many of them, but to go through the observations and recommendations from the uh, based on the above, based on what Peter brought out and uh, what I just looked at in terms of force readiness, I'll just go through these quickly. And I must, uh, before I get to them, I must say as a, for us as staff, it was actually very nice to look through this and see what aspects the, the, the committee have focused on. And I think there's a lot of positives to take out of the focus areas of this uh, two defense committees over the past uh, two and a half years. There's been a focus on a lot of, of, of important aspects. So based on, on the things that we have to report back to the houses in terms of, of uh, rule 120, um, the following observations are drawn from what Peter and I just presented. Uh, firstly, the committee notes that the integration process has been formally concluded and subsequent efforts at integration as uh, appropriately handled by parliamentary structures. Similarly, the committee notes that minor concerns around the integration process, such as the use of dated force numbers and queries around military promotions still remain. Secondly, the committee appreciates the immense work done since 1996 in making the SANDF more representative of the people of South Africa. Yet, the committee also observed concerns going forward in maintaining this goal, given the skewed nature of the recent MSD is intakes and as it relates to equity targets. Number three, the committee accepts that it is yet to undertake a detailed study of the level of morale in the DOD. But, is, but it notes indicators from institutions such as the Defense Forest Service Commission that efforts to boost morale should be enhanced. Number four, in relation to defense readiness, the committee confirms the findings of the 2015 defense review that the SANDF is in a critical state of decline and that the status quo remains with little progress made to address ongoing challenges. Number five, the committee observes an increased reliance on the SANDF 
for both internal domestic deployments in support of the SAPS and other government departments, is in addition to its external conventional peacekeeping and peace enforcement, enforcement operations. Number six, the committee acknowledges that the stagnating defense budgetary allocation is not commensurate with the increasing operational demands being placed on the SANDF. Number seven, the committee notes that the declining defense allocation as a percentage of GDP is of concern, out of step with international trends, and impacts negatively on long-term defense sustainability. Number eight, the committee notes that the reduced defense allocation impacts negatively on, domestic, on the domestic defense industry, as well as defense-related research and development and the maintenance of sovereign defense capabilities. Number nine, the committee acknowledges that while the defense allocation may not be sufficient, major concern remains around the misalignment of defense spending and the increasing expenditure on compensation of employees as a percentage of the defense budget since 2010. So it's not a, a new problem. Number 10, the committee expresses concern around the decreasing availability of prime mission equipment due to maintenance constraints, as well as the lack of new acquisition initiatives. Number 11, the committee notes decreasing training efforts, specifically around prime mission equipment in the SA Air Force and SA Navy, and that relates to flying hours and sea hours. And lastly, the committee concludes that the level of defense readiness of the SNDF, specifically as it relates to its conventional military role, continues to deteriorate and is, urgent, and is in urgent need of redress to prevent the loss of capabilities and conventional obsolescence. Um, these observations are very much aligned with what is uh, in the 2015 Defense Review as well, and it is based on the activities of the committee over the past, over the past years. And unlike other reports, Chair and members, this um, Rule 120 requires uh, recommendations to be made to the Houses of Parliament. So these are not recommendations to the Department, this is recommendations to the Houses. So um, we're proposing four recommendations for, for your consideration uh, to the Houses of Parliament. Firstly, is a recommendation, it's not a recommendation, it's more of an undertaking. So there's work that the committee has done, but there's still outstanding aspects. Um, so the, so if if you so wish, the committee can make the following undertaking, um, undertakings to the Houses of Parliament in relation to Rule 120D, uh, on which it will then it, it can further report at the end of the sixth Parliament in its legacy report. So we can this is a midterm review at the end of uh, the, the committee's life. Um, then it can conclude on these aspects. And the aspects to, to be included there, uh, which should be interrogated over the next two years, is uh, the, J, the Joint Standing Committee of Defense will request the department to explain the population figures in the annual reports of 2018-19 and 2020-21, uh, as it is unlikely that these figures could change so dramatically in comparison to previous years. Those are the figures that Peter pointed out uh, that were uh, incorrectly Included. The committee will request a specific update on integration related issues, especially given the comment that the issue is time bound and likely to lapse with time. Third, the committee will request the department to provide specific statistics on the representation of former military structures in the DoD, and that is to be able to report on the integration method. Um, and lastly, the committee will engage the department and other relevant structures on the status of morale in a defense force. And that is perhaps something we can look at over the next two years. The second uh, <clears throat> recommendation to the Houses of Parliament is that the Houses of Parliament should consider a formal recommendation to the department to enhance its efforts to address representativity regarding race and gender, as well as ensuring that the gender desk is established to further assist affected SNF members with regards to, for, for instance, sexual exploitation and abuse cases, which will be accountable, this, uh, this desk, which will be accountable uh, amongst other two parliament uh, through its defense committees. The third uh, proposed recommendation here is that the Houses of Parliament should encourage the SNF to include its efforts to keep the force broadly representative of the people of South Africa specifically through its intake of young South Africans, and that the SNF should continue to report to the Houses on this matter through the Joint Standing Committee of Defense. And lastly, Chair, related to this committee's earlier recommendation in, uh, around a year ago, uh, the recommendation is that 
both houses of parliament should consider an urgent debate and possible house resolutions on the status of the SANDF with spe uh, specific focus on the following. This relates to defense readiness. Such a debate should look at the desired roles and functions of the SANDF, the appropriate funding of the SANDF to fulfill its desired roles and functions, the reduced level of force readiness of the SNDF, specifically as it relates to its conventional role. And lastly, the medium to long term acquisition and maintenance of prime mission equipment to meet the forces conventional operational requirements. Uh, Chair, these are the. This is looking back at what the committee has done, specifically in relation to the five matters uh, that it's supposed to, uh, to report on. These are the observations and recommendations that we drew from the work of the committee, but uh, it is open for, for discussion. I will hand back to you, but it is open for your interpretation and discussion, and we will make the necessary amendments. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Velum and, and Peter, for uh, this good work. Um, you know, you, I look at it and, and, and say, man, this is how far we've come. Um, it's, it's, it's been quite a journey uh, from 1999 to where we are, but without this mirror, um, see, sometimes you, you, it's difficult to look back and, and, and see the, the ground that has been covered um, uh, so far. <clears throat> it's been a journey and I think we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, thanks for bringing this thing up. And uh, sometimes we work and work and work and we need people who would keep, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> what you call a, um, uh, those boxes, you know, just to check if we are uh, ticking all the boxes that we, we needed to tick uh, during our term as, as, as members of parliament. And it can also assist us to plan uh, uh, for the remaining years, because we look at the ground covered and then uh, look at the period remaining and then start to look at other matters that we think we can still uh, take up um, during the remaining, um, within the remaining period. Colleagues, um, uh, do you want to make a comment? Uh, even if it is on a process point, uh, I will allow it. Chairperson, my only comment is, it, it, again, it's, it's exceptional. Um, I think it's, um, they have touched on all the, the aspects that we were referring to. Um, and, and that's actually very good. I just want to make sure um, uh, from the Joint Standing Committee on Defence, um, um, I'm sure we can make recommendations to the, to the houses to discuss this and debate this, or should it be done via the Portfolio Committee to the House? Uh, just, just in terms of procedure, if we can do it via the Joint Standing Committee, no problem, because then it goes to both houses. But remember, on the other house, they do not have a defense um, uh, issue. It's more security that they're talking about there. So, uh, so just just that I make sure about how I conceptualize it in in my brain. Thank you. Okay, no, I hear you. Um, is there a date by which um, uh, the matter must come before Parliament? Um, uh, considering that this is a mid-term uh, review, um, would also guide us on that as well. Uh, any other uh, comments? Uh, Mr. Raider? Yes, good evening, Chair. Thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to comment. And the one standout issue that comes out of this report is that this committee is certainly blessed with, uh, with a good team of people in the administration, because I do think it's an excellent report and I'd like to congratulate uh, everyone involved. Uh, and if it was only Peter and Wilhelm, well, exceptional job, well done. Chair, however, I think it, it, it is quite a complex report. Um, and 
you know, as, as the, the point was made right up front, that some of the information that comes out here, uh, not information gleaned from work of the Joint Standing Committee, but the work of the uh, uh, Portfolio Committee on Defence um, has, has, has helped to inform some of the contents of the report. So uh, it, it is quite a lot to, to take on board. And I do think that perhaps, um, you know, a little bit of, of better discussion uh, would have been most useful, certainly to, to me. Um, I, I do, however, think that, you know, the fact that there was a time, we, we've worked through it, uh, and, and I do believe, you know, that, 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 that it covers what it needs to cover, certainly. But, Chair, if I can ask a few questions, midterm, I suppose, only comes every five years. But to shove this in at the end of a meeting, uh, when we've got 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, on, and I see we've already gone 20 minutes over time, um, I'm not sure that that does the actual report and the work that goes into it justice. Um, and I'm not also not sure that I feel that I own this report. So I do believe that it needs to be presented in both houses. I think that there is a way that that, that, that can happen. Um, but I would be a lot more comfortable if I if I felt like I owned the report, uh, having had me having worked on my own, uh, again without having had some of that prior work uh, done in our committee. Uh, and we think I would almost agree, all, all but one of, of, of the meetings of this committee. Um, yeah, I, I, I just feel that it's a rush job of a meeting, and I don't think that really does the, the report itself service. Uh, if needs be, uh, I, I believe this report is, is, is sufficiently of good quality that, that we can accept it, but certainly in future, Chair, I believe much more work you know, other committees would say not from my committee in, in, in the NCRP, the Select Committee on Finance. If we had a report like this, we would spend at least one whole meeting uh, working through the report itself. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I not I noted I the points you're making, uh, Mr. Rader. Um, uh, uh, Peter and, and Willem, um, was it your intention that this matter must still uh, serve again uh, before the portfolio committee? Uh, Chair, if I, if I may respond. Um, this is the, the first draft of this report, Chair. So we are presenting it. Um, and, and, and I need to mention, Chair, this is the, the, we are in uncharted waters because this is the first time a, a media review strategy has, has been, 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 been done by us. So, so we're presenting this and, and we would dearly like members to, to input, to correct or add or, or, or whatever. So this is the first round chair and my suggestion is that maybe in the next quarter, you know, just have an agenda item and, and members they can then add and Mr. Ryder especially referred now, you know, he, he's not comfortable because it's the end of the meeting and, and there's a lot of information and then members can then add to that chair. And after that, we can decide on the way forward and when it should be presented the two hours chair thank you okay no i'm, I'm happy i'm happy that we're not uh, adopting it today and uh, so i think it, it it addresses my earlier questions uh, if there was any deadline by uh, when we should uh, take this matter to parliament um, it's a committee report uh, so we can uh, we need to, to go through it um so it means that we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it when we come back because this is the last uh, committee meeting. I agree with Mr. Rader uh, because this is uh, um, it's, it's a review of the work uh, of the of uh, from the time we started. We need to spend a bit of time uh, on on it. Um, again, we'll be debating it on, in Parliament. So uh, please just find a date, uh, maybe the first date when we come back. Um, um, at least to myself, this item and, and, and the only item on the agenda. And uh, so uh, do I agree, colleagues? I think Mr. Mario also covered as well. 
Yeah, I've got no problem. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, 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 Tim, for, for this good work. And uh, colleagues, let's go through the report, take it uh, to, I mean, uh, discuss it uh, in preparation for the meeting where we would look at it the last time and adopt it, for the last time and adopt it. All right, <laughs> colleagues, uh, thank, thank you very much. Um, I think we are done. I can't uh, take you beyond this. Um, uh, we'll deal with the minutes at some other time. And uh, we, it's, we were, have gone over time by 24 minutes. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues. I'm sure you all agree if we, we end the meet, uh, we end at this point. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you, Salo. Thank you, Chair.